All right, welcome to Smokey's Grime Files, also uh, Smokey Reacts, kind of, because today we've got a big one. This is going to be the home invasion, the story of Channel U. Shout out to Link Up TV and everybody that put this together. Uh, currently, I'm thinking of doing this all in one shot. If not, I will break it into two parts, just depending on how chatty I get the, uh, throughout this. But uh, I've been really waiting for this documentary to drop. I've just really wanted to see this. So thank you to the homie that linked me. Let me know this was out. Uh, thank you to anybody that's going to watch this with me because this is going to be a long one. So thank you. Please hit that like, subscribe. Patreon is in the description box. Uh, yeah, let's get into this one. Like I'm, I'm just, I'm just stoked. Oh yeah, pull up out right now on all streaming platforms music videos on the channel that's my first grime release for 2023 i have a grime double disc coming five songs of grime five songs of drill with my boy links that's five aside is what we're working on right now so if you give us a couple minutes and go check that out be greatly appreciated now let's get into this I had Sky and we didn't pay the bill and going through Sky, Channel U was still there. Let's look at you. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, Els, you good? Yeah. Go. Let's go. Let's go. So for the kids who don't know, what was Channel U? Cool. Channel U, bloody hell. What was it before it was 365? It moved around a few times. That's, that should be so simple, but that's actually not. The epicenter of black youth culture in our day when we was coming up. We had a rave scene, a club scene, we had a pirate radio scene, and then out of nowhere, there was a channel. Getting off of radio, Channel U was needed. That was Big like note. the starting point for man in terms of getting the television. It was like, this is for us. All of a sudden, we saw like people that we knew from our ends with music videos on this channel called Channel U. Man would just come home and just have that channel on all day. Channel U is on my TV 24-7. Still got my uniform on, guys straight on the TV. I sat and watched Channel U all day. Sky, limited channels, you get me? That one was free. <laughs> they man, never had no, used to try to stay no up late MTV to watch base. The, You know what I'm saying? The explicit things. There's no other place that the realest, most UK music was ever going to live. It weren't polished. It was just raw, uncut and it was just what was going on. When my telly goes on, always gets over channel you, definitely. Grand reverse rap. If you're from UK, that was the one. It was the pirate radio station of TV. Yeah, I think I would agree. A channel for you. And when they said you, they mean us. And when they mean us, they mean urban. When they mean urban, they mean black and ghetto. Just any Tom, Dick and Harry would be next to Kanye West, and it was like lit. It looked pirate, it looked raw and authentic, and it was, but it was a proper channel, it was TV. You'd have everything from Dizzy Rascal to Podgy Figures to was it, Skrilla Kids. Channel U. I don't know. Like, there's so many faces right now that I've just either not seen or I have no idea who they are. Like, I don't know who Podgy Figures is or any of the people that Dizzy just said. Was putting people on. They could have done a video on a phone, they will accept it as long as the song is banging. It's not like a free for all, but it was just like more open. That platform banging. It's not like a free for all, but. I'm like, she almost looked like Pagey Cakey, but I know it's not Pagey Cakey. But it was just like more <clears> open. <throat> that ooh, platform ooh. made stars. I love Shizzle. Shizzle was, ah, uh, it was straight up brilliant. He had the girl upside down with the legs in the air. <laughs> An era where music was more unfiltered. Oh, that's Everyone Mr. was just trying to think. Charles. <laughs> Might have just bugging out. And it's sick, because that's how we felt. There was some group called Heaven Sent Fogs. I don't even know if anyone even remembers, but I remember everyone. It's what sent it into the countryside. Grime is just in everybody's homes, up in Manchester, up in Birmingham. It played the greatest hits from the urban streets. Where were you now? <laughs> Mom, present. Billy, present. Dad? Dad? <laughs> yeah. If you know, you know, innit? Oh, yeah. The best channel to come on Sky, in my opinion, other than Trouble. 
roadside had get that door on there. Even songs like Bow for the Wolves, you know what I mean? Who remember that? In terms of making black music travel outside of London, Channel U was everything. Channel U was a hard knock school, man. Back then, we would just go up to Channel U. And it was based at Old Street, just past the congestion zone. So a man them used to, I think, park their car up and then walk across. For independent artists, it was a major transformation. It was a place where we sharpened our tools massively. Channel U helped us create a network. So for the first time, we were music managers as well. We were editors as well. We were cameramen as well. We were at the beginning of something totally new. You know, and we just built up our empires at that point from there. If you're on Channel U, <laughs> you're actually doing things. Face the pain and strife in life, journeys, learn from mistakes in life, journeys, uh, dreams in life, journeys, keep your mouth out and don't concern me, cut out the hype from life. Like I say, if you don't know Channel U, she's too young for you, bro, because Channel U Jeez. was the channel, bro. I'm an old cunt, I'm, too, I'm, I'm apparently too young for them. Like, goddamn, I, I didn't even know what Channel U was until six months ago. I'm Stuart Lund. I was the co-founder of Channel U along with Darren Platts. The idea for the channel came from Darren. It was Darren's idea. Uh, Darren's business was premium rate services. He was selling ringtones and, and competitions and, and similar services on the phone. He'd been thinking about the box and realized that it made economic sense to make a channel which was a little cooler than the box in terms of its music content. I think we did actually toy with the idea of having the name Coolbox, but unfortunately we decided against that. We wanted something which was viewer focused, so Channel U is about you. Neither of us had any experience in music, neither of us had any experience in television, but business is business. You do your research, you talk to a lot of people. In terms of practically how we did it, we, we raised the finance for it, uh, some from ourselves personally, and some from external investors. We needed to get the Ofcom license to broadcast. We needed to have a deal with Sky for the program number. We needed to have a deal with the satellite owners for space on the satellite. <coughs> and then we had to have the technical side uh, put together. I think we wrote a lot of the software in-house for that. From memory, we launched on Valentine's Day in 2003. <laughs> I'm we knew the day it was going to go up, but we didn't know what time. So we were staring at an empty screen and then it just magically appeared. And uh, it was a hugely satisfying moment. Before Channel U came about, we was very limited, really. I mean, it was strictly it's down to skinny, power radio station and word of mouth. Because in them early times, it's like, we did have great examples Reaching from different that. artists, and then the scene kind of went quiet. The bar was set by So Solid, right? So I guess for, like, young rappers and MCs blood. coming up, we really looked at So Solid videos. That looked like a good one, haters. All that there was. There was a decline after the UK garage sort of scene sort of uh, diminished. So it did kind of feel like the door was closed, the television door was closed, maybe the radio door was closed. We couldn't get on radio, that's why we made Pirate Radio. Gemma. The Pirate Radio station Mr. comes Merkel. with that premise of his pirate, so not everyone know, know about it. If you know about it, you know about it. If you're in the inner circle, you, you're in there. Pirate stations were mad local, unless you was on a good one, like a Rinse FM or something, they might cover a good portion of London a little bit outside. But if you're on some of the smaller stations, the reach might not be as wide, and you're more likely to get licked down. I've been on small radio stations, you're doing your thing, you're MCing them before you know it. There was so much lack of output, so much lack of platforms, people were just willing to do anything. We just literally used to just drive around. You're literally it's bullying people. Oh, Rolled by your just CD. Buy your CD and bullying them. Realistically, there's no them. way I don't know these men either. It. They're kind of buying it on hope. So you go to a record store and you put like maybe like 10 CDs in the record store. You come back and if they've sold five, they give you the money for the five and return the other five so you can take them to another store if they're not selling fast enough. So that was sale or return. We used to just do everything just fully manually. You had to be determined. I mean, you had to really love music. You had to want to be an artist, like, to want to be an MC, want to be a rapper, want to be a DJ, want to be a producer. It was about going to different areas with your friends, spitting in youth either. centers, house raves, recording sets on tape, someone would sling them around the ends. Going to raves, you're not getting paid, driving to bloody Newcastle. 
Newcastle. If you ain't on the eight or ten, so and you're doing what they call back then graveyard shift. Yo, I'm on the radio. Check for me in four to six, my guy. No one's listening apart from the man going for them construction rail in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> to get on TV, you know, you couldn't do that without having a record deal. You couldn't do that without having a certain budget. It was all about DVDs. Shout out, that Lolo. time, If you made a music video, that's where it would go on the DVD. Like after your interview, then your music video would come in and people would know the song's coming out. We had to film. Edit, color grade, when it goes and they all come out. You turn it over and some of them's not burnt, then that's a loss. Then we had to cut out the, the, the cover. So the whole process was silly hard. There was a few different DVDs. I'm sure Streets Incarcerated was around them time. Times, uh, Risky Roads. Dark and cold used to do something as well. Bound to blow. Loads of mics do the decks practice. I would aim high. You're distributing it. I was just, oh, what the fuck is aim high? We need to check out some aim high if it's available. You're not selling it all the time, especially to shops. You're leaving it there and that's your money. And then you've got to go and do promotion. And again, what is promotion? It's word of mouth those days. With a DVD, you have to wait till it comes out. You have to go to the Wembley market or whatever market's near to you. People would have to know where the record shops are, have the money to go and buy them, and, and a whole lot of things. So a lot of younger crowd obviously wouldn't have been able to do it. Then you might watch it, then you might lend it to your brethren, or you might do spare things. <laughs> but now, with Channel U, it was every day, innit? The original music choice was put on by Charlie Buthin, who we'd recruited to manage the music content. There was absolutely no urban focus in the original brief, so it would have had things like Eminem, Foo Fighter, I think there was Christina Aguilera, there was Nerd on there, things like that. But Charlie's music focus was very much the urban side of things, and very quickly the playlist moved in that direction. But it was mainly DMX, it was 50 Cent and people like that. Very little was UK based. My name's Ricky Blue, and I was a music and promotions manager at Channel U. In the very, very beginning stage of Channel U, the content was like crazy. Like, there'd be a rock video, there'd be a rap video. They were struggling for content, so there was no rhyme or reason to it. Ricky came from a background which was much more street oriented, and that's really where that genre of the music came in from. Um, I was in a group with a bunch of my brothers from school, and we'd shot a video that we spent about six grand on, and there was nowhere to play it. And we just Mess has been. Jesus Christ. I've. God damn. 6K? You niggas just got out of school. You niggas really must have been outside doing some shit. God, man got 6K for a music video in the early 2000s. Jesus. Sell our CDs on the street. That's what we was known for doing. While I was on the journey of doing that, I met this guy called Charlie. And he was like, look, he's looking for content. Of course, I've, I've got content sitting there. You can have that. And I knew a bunch of other artists who were in the same predicament as we were in from the circuit, whether that be Estelle, Black Twang, loads of others who were. That's my Estelle, like American boy we were Estelle. In from the circuit, whether that be. What? She OG like that? I might put a little bit more respect on her name because I be using her for an example, and I fuck with her. But like, damn, I, the way I be using her name is totally disrespectful. God damn it! Shout out to Estelle though. Be Estelle. Black Twang, loads of others who were all on the circuit at that time. And so he was like, look, can you help me get some content? And I did. Actually, I started doing voiceover work for the channel for like some of the competitions and whatnot. So I was just building up a relationship with them. Charlie and Darren and Stuart must have had some kind of fallout. And then Charlie was just gone. And then they just contacted me directly and asked me if I could basically manage the channel and get the content for them. And I was like, why not? At that time, it was myself, Kate, who was head of programming, I believe she was. And then Carly was like Kate's junior, if that made sense. Then Patrick, who was like my assistant for a period almost, or my junior. Right, my name's Patrick Abuccio. I was in charge of video submissions at Channel U and also a co-producer on the Ill Out show. I used to get the US songs like Jay-Z, Song Cry, which never played in the UK, Beanie Siegel, Feel It In The Air, a lot of the Snoop videos that weren't released in the UK. Did some sneaky stuff and got those videos on because I wanted us to have the best of both worlds. You got Stuart at the back in his room, but we're pretty much just running the channel. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Man's out here planning a, a Berlin trip in the next like three, four days. Niggas is ringing my line off the hook.
is mad. All right, sorry, but let's get into this. Thinking about the science of social deprivation. From ear to wherever in the cancer, the states of man are struggling. The poor lower working. Shout out to that man skinny. I'm you from the start. Them folks in the background, I fucking hate them. That empire is, they really changed the game. They do a lot of good shit. But when it comes to YouTube copyright, they are one of the most abusive companies that I've had to work with. They are far more abusive than Disney, fucking Universal. Empire is just abusing YouTube's copyright system. And I fucking hate it. I fucking hate it. Because it wasn't there when we was doing our thing and then Ricky mentioned it. It was just doing his rounds in the community. Everyone was talking about it because it was a new platform that was showing our music and we could get our music on there. When that channel came around, it was like a big thing. I came out of um, an establishment back into my freedom. <laughs> I came to Carnival and someone had told me, we recognize you, you're a skinny man. And I was like, well, how could you recognize me? They went, channel you, innit? And I'm thinking, channel you, what's channel you? And my friends told me, yeah, there's a video of yours, Cancel the State of Mind, playing on it. I was like, well, this I've got to see. So I took my time out to go to somebody's house who I knew had Sky Television. And I sat there, I think, for the whole day, waiting to see my video come on, which made me look at all of the videos that were on there, like, what is this? This is brilliant. Blood. You go to sleep round here and have nightmares. Wake up and find the worst reality is right there. The difference is in my dreams, I'm always running scared. But in reality, I'm rolling, I'm coming prepared. This is slap right here. This was a good one, for sure. I really did enjoy this one. Skinny Man's Council of State of Mind, that got rinsed. And Skinny Man's album just propelled, like, it done some crazy independent numbers. My name's Peter Murray. I had a commercial relationship with Channel U. I had an artist at the time, Slim, Slim Dutty. Dutty from Northwest London who was signed to the label. They used to like go across the network looking for these music channels that you think you might be able to get your artists on. And there's late at night and I came across this station called Channel U. They was playing a lot of rock music, but the flip side is they was also playing some hip hop and some R&B. And I thought, you know what, this time I'm really doing need some publicity for Slim and Beggars Can't Be Choosers, so I'm gonna hit them up. And I did, and I got through to a guy called Charlie Bluefin. He liked the video, he liked what Slim was, and he started promoting. Beyond that, me being the commercial person that I am, I could really see some commercial opportunities there. At the time, the channel didn't really have quality advertisers for that particular audience. I met with Stuart Lund, and I said to him, look, how about you just sell me some airtime, and I'll fill that airtime with TV commercials, nothing more. We brought significant revenue in, and that revenue would have aided the channel's growth and aided the channel's development. The rain and thinking of you. It was a rather unique experience. I think mean, we had kids from all over and they were making their own content and they were seeing it on national TV. Something which was pretty much unheard of, really. Not just in music, but in any walk of life. I also made sure that if we got a video from Manchester, Liverpool, Birmingham, Coventry that it got on because the channel was being shown nationwide. It feels good, that street love. I try to give it back in words, back against the wall. Now I'm back in first. Back off my coat, back on my turf, back on my post. Written notes from my heart through the back of my throat. Hungry for bread, heavy with plans, but look sharp. Or a mark feds, regular man's get sucked off. UK rebelling slave, which way to get paid, looking that way to get changed. Would I get out of this rain? Um me and Nuts were from um, the ends, the official ends. How are you not going to spot me on camera? We did. What's going on? Maybe look crazy. I was in a memory lane. And guys, I'm memory lane, <laughs> man. Yeah. It's Chung Family. Uh -huh. oh. The fashion blood. Ugh. Chung Family's difference Jesus. on Channel U was always... The Yo. Chung Family's... Y'all remember going to school dressed like this, yo? Like, that was a fly outfit back in the day. Like, niggas was killing back in the day with that one. But I'm just, like, looking at it now. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Why are my shorts on my ankles? Because I got cool ass on. Difference on Channel U was always the group's quality control in terms of the quality of the video stood out. The sound of the music married with that quality control of the video, for me, is what, looking in from the outside, just stood out. We was trying our best to compare ourselves 
to the Americans. We're trying to get like high definition film cameras and lenses. We're trying to get the greatest pixels and the greatest grading. We're trying to get 35 millimeters, etc., etc. And the money. Come on, clock. Real money. A West chick, say with a classy attack. They dress slip, act right, tell the chick she would wife. Me, I wasn't really down for the drama strap. So I kissed the dog for life. Uh, Scan, do you remember drama strap? Can the music plays, anybody? Big up Luke Biggins, he was the connoisseur, he was the, the mastermind behind our visuals, mm -hmm. behind our imagery, because he made our videos look amazing for the money we gave him. He gave us a great conveyor belt of phenomenal videos and UK, they gravitated to us. They rated us and we kept trying to compete with the Americans. Let's get a video as good as that. I'm looking at 94 videos, 95 videos from the States. And can we make our videos look as good as that for the UK? So my name's Luke Biggins. I never worked for Channel U, but I was around nine times out of 10. In the Channel U days, Luke was doing all the videos. One time I remember sitting there at night time watching Channel U and I literally had six videos back to back, which I directed, played. Luke was a friend of ours. He did my earlier videos and he was the one that was like telling me about the Digibeater and how, what we needed to do next to get it onto TV. Oh. For me, like my biggest budget, I spent 12 grand on a video. Yeah, and I would never do it again, but at that time. I, I know I'm doing this shit wrong. These, I thought I believed in myself. Shit, 12, six grand, 12 grand. These niggas is not playing with these numbers. And these are independent artists. Like, man is doing bits and extra work to get a budget up to 12K. Jesus, shout out to Craze, cuz. I, I need to watch that video just because my nigga spent 12 and the six. Link me those videos so I can watch those because those niggas spent enough money that I need to watch them. Yeah, that was me <clears throat> trying to make something more commercial that would stand out. Luke Biggins, big up Luke. Epic, we done it on film. I'm not sure on the mills no more, but it was high end. When I had the meeting with Luke, I said it doesn't matter what the budget is, it just has to look. That's a hard letterman. I don't know the brand of that one, but that shit is hard. The Haji car. figures, shout out to that nigga. Is it Polo? When I had the meeting with Luke, I said it doesn't matter what the budget is, it just has to look the tin car. I didn't feel like I was just representing myself. I felt like it was like West London as a whole. Shot the video, I rolled up to actual Channel U, and we just chilled outside, like waiting to see if somebody like can kind of pop out. So this black brother come out. I said, yo, my name's Podgy. I shot a video. Just kind of let me know from the jump, can this work now? If it can't, let me go back to the drawing board and let me know what can work. Yeah, I just respected that. And they, they just had a, they, there was a vibe about their movement that I, I think I liked how they held themselves, if you see what I mean. I know that he put a lot of effort into his product. Like, a lot of effort. And then I think we was just at my dogs one day, we must have turned it over, a couple of videos came on, and then, bow, it came on, and it was like, raw, like, raw, like. Yo, this beat got me feeling good, yeah. Spit hard like I think I should, yeah. I keep couple fires in the hood, yeah. Oh, is that right, Pats? Red brick passageway, Mr. Clubs, let's go. All the girls love the jump off, yeah. Pudgy, are they there when they jump off, yeah. Pudgy, I got it, it's like, yeah, he's right. <laughs> yeah, he was saying some stuff, man. You knew through that 25 bags in, you weren't gonna get it back. But you knew the man them who was outside with their videos. Even Hound Sterling, his video was cold, man. I just wanted to stunt. I just wanted oh, to I flex. Know, I know Sterling. We just wanted to flex. Like this is what we're doing over here. I don't know what you're doing over there. We step in the club, all icy dark. We pop bottles. Better tell your wifey dark. I'm with ten hungry thugs that like to buck. Macking chicks in short skirts that like to. <sighs> when you pop on Perry, your chicks will come over. It won't take very long. I think the man just wanted to link. Get when you pop there, Don Perry on, chicks will come over. It won't take very long. Oh, they're so basic, but it's, the nigga's not lying. And it's still technically a like rhyme. Like, there's technically nothing wrong with this, but Jesus Christ, that motherfucker, that, like, that bar, like, fuck. It's just so fucking simple.
Shit. Yeah, that's really and truly, that's what it is. Man, them just wanting more girl. <laughs> so if that's the platform that's going to make man get the love, and that's I'm on there, bitch. Sincere, a good friend of mine, I grew up with him like um, like a brother. Um, I think we went halves on our videos. I swear I'd met Luke Biggin, and then brought me along to meet him, and then we split the money. So basically, we could get the equipment and the crew for two days. You have it on a Saturday, I have it on a Sunday. We were doing stuff like that, so I was fortunate to have, like, a good kind of, like, connection of people around me that were all at the same level and were all trying to rise and, and get recognised. I shot That's Not Gangsta and Sway shot Flow Fashion, which is sick, because they both went on to be Channel U Classics and Big Rhythm. Flow Fashion is actually about getting into credit card debt, but because we were African, Everyone just assumed that it was about fraud. I run up to the bar, then I swipe, swipe. When I'm filling up my car, I just swipe, swipe. When I'm shopping for the bar, I'm gonna swipe, swipe. Stay. I can have anything I like. Why? Why are you wearing that shade? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just following the fashion. And I'd be in central London or something, and I'd just be like shopping normally, and I'd see people come up to me like, I'm not doing fraud. <laughs> Uh-huh. Little Derek's doing ouch, yeah, yeah. Little Derek's doing fine, fine. Little Derek's doing cool, cool. You know how we do. My biggest record on Channel U, it was Little Derek. You know what I mean? It's actually just my biggest record. Like, I've had records that have sold more, but people don't remember those records like they remember Little Derek. It's flavor, you know what I mean? It's like, Little Derek's doing okay. Little Derek's doing fine, fine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, especially at that time, people wasn't trying to do that. It was like a snapshot of the time. You know what I mean? And anybody who remembers that kind of period, always kind of Little Derek is probably one of the records that they're drawn towards. And it went on to, I mean, the producer of Little Derek went on to produce Empire State of Mind for Jay-Z. You know what I mean? Little Derek was one of Nipsey Hussle's favorite records. You know what I mean? Hit me up and it was like, not UK, it's just, one of my favorite like it, it traveled so far for something that was not even supposed to be a single you know and it was just that kind of new era that this is when at least how i'm hearing the story about this little derek record this is when music has heart that it does what he's talking about when music feels or makes you feel something that's when it goes past just where you're from, what you represent, and it's just what the song stands for. And I think a lot of people probably could just relate to what Lil Derek the song is about. That's why it was able to kind of grow the legs that it had, and it wasn't meant to be a single, because it's just some shit. Again, when you make the songs that have heart, they don't particularly always have like single intentions. It's just some shit that I needed to do or wanted to do on a day. And then once it got into the hands of people, people just really resonated with it and it begins to just kind of build on its own. It's very organic. Gave it that spark enabled it to grow further. Stepped out my house, I'm feeling fresh and brand new. All who did the trim, Rihanna done the hair do. And everything I wear is new. My hat is she jacket, Puma top box, fresh jeans and Nike cam. Boo. Sprayed a little Versace dreamer on me too. So every girl that passes like, ooh, woo. Police don't pull us over like, ooh, woo. Cause they kids watch MTV and Channel U, U. I started realizing how big Channel U was when I started going outside a lot more and people were recognizing me and it was like, this channel's quite big. It's my time, like it or not. Okay, Cotton shout out to the OG. This finger take you with it like a I ain't never seen my nigga without dress before either. That's hilarious. <laughs> and slide my mind, spitting rhymes, refined as old wines, no games since age five or old mine. I don't know what the arrangement was from a business perspective, but in terms of the operations of it, Stuart was like was the main guy in the office. It was my sole priority at the time, and Darren was much more of a, a sort of silent partner for the first three years. And then Darren became more visible and was around more until Stuart was no longer there and then Darren was there most of the time. The chairman, a guy called Paul Dixon, who was one of the investors and I didn't get along and the channel was losing money and I think it's fair to say we decided by mutual agreement that I was going to depart. Roll with us or get rolled over. Uh-huh. Roll with us or get rolled over. Uh-huh. Roll with us or get rolled over. That's right. It's time now. The wait is over. I mean, for me, Channel U was Darren, and it was Cat. You know, Cat really was the face of it. I think anyone that kind of knows Darren, probably. Shorty had a glow up, bro. Come on now. 
Come on, hey, shout out to Cat. Probably met him in a pub, <laughs> and um, and you know, like that was exactly the case. Like I was out with some friends, they introduced me to him. Originally, like he's got like northern roots as well, so like we were just chattering away. And I remember him saying to me, he was like, oh, like you know, like you're funny. If you ever want a job, take my card. He originally gave me a job to, you know, like answer the phones, do a bit of admin, like all that kind of thing. It was a lot more than just a nine to five. It was very much like I lived and breathed Channel U every single day. So my role at Channel U was um, controlling and overseeing operation of the booking agency. Coming from Soul Solid Crew, one way of getting yourself promoted was doing live gigs. So I came up with the idea of why don't we set up a booking agency using your platform. Give the independent artist an opportunity to go out on the road, not only to promote the music, to make money, and it's a full circle uh, revenue, which kind of folds back into their pockets to create more videos, more, and then at the end, with that notoriety, go and get a record deal. I mean, Darren Platt created a company together called Hype City. I'm Shorty, a lot of people knew me as Chanel. I was the bookings manager at Hype City in conjunction with Channel U. Darren was a sort of person who would love any sort of backlash, because to him, something's good's happening. He would even tell me, like, shabs, 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 shabs. People have come into the office today. Ah, oh, the guy mad. Someone tried to flip the desk. Somehow. But rather than being a man that's um, sort of, like, wary and scared, he would be laughing and go, they got to deal with it. Ah. And he would laugh about how the whole staff's got to deal with it. And he knew when to jet. We all went to prison, came out. Why do I know that name, Jaja Soze? Why do I know my man's name? Why? I sent like around eight videos and no, no one was getting played. And then I found out where Channel U office was. There was no security. You go down this one little alleyway on Lever Street, I think it was, and go up the stairs. And it was, no, it, was, it was access free. So anyone can bowl in at any time. Me and Inch pulled up our motorbikes. You could see everyone looking out the windows and like, oh shit. And as soon as you come in, Cat's just sitting there, tatted off. There was always some kind of madness going on. It was always absolutely nuts. And I think what had happened until I got there is that, like, if anyone turned up and, like, you know, rang the buzzer, they'd be like, yes, ignore it. I said, well, yeah, we're PDC. And I was like, oh, yeah, we know who you are. OK, I've got the video now. Who do I give it to? And when does it get played? Cat came and she's like, no, it don't work like that. You knew where the funding was coming from on a lot of the videos and everything, and, like, a lot of these guys, like, putting everything into it. A lot of them putting their lives on the line, and so, like, for me to turn around to people and start saying, oh, your video's not going on, they took it really personally. I kind of, like, was being a bit, like, you know, those days, it's a bit, like... And then, like, computers that ended up getting tucked around the office. But Cat was cool, though. She handled the situation good. Eventually, we had, like, four videos <laughs> no problem, my back nigga. Back. Yeah. And then I think, literally, like, Three months into that, the police done a big raid on all the record shops for PDC, CDs and DVDs, and then Channel U took the videos down. So we was on there for like around, I think, three, four months straight. And then that's it, we didn't go on there ever again. I just don't, this is kind of a side note, but man chatting to me from the UK talking about you got freedom of speech and freedom of expression, like that shit is different, blood. Man can't go into the fucking record shop in America and take man CDs out. Like we don't have those things. Like freedom of expression in the UK is so rigid and the systems and shit that they do where they remove your content physically from a shop or in today's time where they're taking down Mandem's records off of YouTube and shit, Ain't no fucking way to do that in America. Nigga put some shit up in America, that shit stays on the internet. Some nigga put some shit up that they feel like is too volatile in the UK, they take that shit down. So hearing uh, Soze say the shit that he's saying, I'm just like, fuck, bro. Like, what? How are these niggas doing shit like this? This shit is like, to me, it just seems so illegal. Taking man's records out of the shop. Like, that's crazy. Or just... Ah, like deplatforming somebody in that time, or just even today doing that shit. I'm just, it's so crazy. It's when man Yo, shout out to the OG. I fuck with Clash Nicole. Oh, I know SAS. Deep set, deep set. Oh, is that that Rimsey 2011 freestyle? That London 2011 freestyle is where 
I know this closer beat from because I know this closer beat from something because I'm I don't I don't think I've ever listened to OTB but that beat I know it and it's a cold one. Slightly, like bass might have had the better quality, but kind of for us the better music was on Channel U. Like you know what I mean? That's where our music was, not like all the Amer like yeah all this American stuff. Yeah, that's all cool. But us here, we was on Channel. U. This nigga Scorcher, cause this nigga don't give a fuck. <laughs> Man, you filming the interview, cause he got the. I just woke up out of bed here, cause like man didn't even throw a hat on that bitch. Like ah, that nigga Scorcher is really a nigga who was outside. Like that nigga, do, he don't care about none of the pageantry or the dress up shit that we do for entertainment. That nigga's like, you gonna take me as I am, and that's what you shall get. Ah, oh, god damn it. Oh, you. MTV Base is a brand, they were doing well, but the UK content they had was sanitized. So we wanted to keep the integrity, but also make sure that we don't lose ground quality wise. So when Biggs came with Core Blimey and that video was just amazing. And then G Fresh came with the quality of the videos that his company were directing and North Star came. The video quality was different. Where we were spending like, maybe like between five and 10 grand on a video. I think they might want to spend like 30 or something crazy. Like. Where are these niggas getting this money? Where? These are all artists with independent fucking like deals or just like niggas have no deals but they are spending major record label money on music videos and I don't want to call everybody a drug dealer but god damn it, where the fuck is this money coming from, guys? Like that. So their videos are always something to look forward to. Yeah, I've come too far to turn around Can't look back, I need to turn my life around I need to learn my life is loud Take it down the power, and make my wife is proud I know what life is now, know my life is now Know my life's a mountain And I'm trying to reach the top and kind of hide Don't want to drop, don't want to drop All right, all you go What the fuck does core blimey mean? I know this song, but I feel like they're still in something from the 90s that was an American record first. You gotta ask. That sounds like fucking one of them Alanis Morissette songs or something. Fundamentals sound like what Nip is trying to do right now. I don't know if anybody's paying attention to like up and coming like R and B singers in the UK, especially male ones. But Nippa makes music quite much like this right now. Boys in the studio with uh, Bryson Tiller, 
Craig David took my man on tour and that. Shout out to Nipper, bro. I really like his sound. Oh, yeah. That's that Sean Paul, Sean Paul rhythm right there. sudden you just saw everybody just rolling out these better quality videos and the tag of channel U being that channel that has the weird videos and the dead like technicals that was going and that's when we decided at the time let's rebrand the EPG. Space had something called Beats, Rhymes and Life so I said let's call ours Beats with a Z because that's so cool. Grime and Life. When we started doing that and changing things, people started to see, oh, right, Channel U trying to step up now, and our ratings in that demographic was actually better than MTV at that time. I need to listen to that one. That shit sound like a vibe. I just was stuck to her body. Thought to myself, gotta make a shorty. We wanted to be glossy in it. I was just trying to be with my American counterparts. I remember coming up, I was just like, I'm trying to do it as big as everybody else does. So we shot the video, half of it was in Portugal, the other half was in London, like in some club called Tantra. I was trying to do it as big as possible. <laughs> we come into my room, Channel U gave us a different audience though, like it was the streets, in it? That was where people were seeing it every day. I was 17 years old, going on 18. That summer, it was like coming to my room on the R&B side and like POW was doing everything else. Ow, ow. I know this one. Well, firstly, I wanted to just make a tune with the man then. When we used to go on radio, there used to be about 10 men in the radio station. At that time, we was doing rallies. Me after you, after you. That was like the thing. So I wanted to create something like that on the record, but create the energy we create on the radio station. <laughs> the bar rhythm, See, I know that's it. I've watched that video. The bar rhythm. There was a time in Grime where producers just kept it simple, where they just had two parts of the song, one eight bar that would well, go on, Black. Have certain instruments, certain sound, and then all flick to another eight bar, and it's just a loop. Young Star is a part of Music Mob. He kind of changed the game. That Pulse X vibe was probably one of the first eight bar switch songs. If you was an MC doing a radio set, and that came in, you make make sure you're there, like to try and make sure you get your spot on that. You wanna, you wanna buff. Definitely, there's gonna be some tapes of me going off on that rhythm. Definitely. The process of you know getting an eight-bar relay all-star tune. Firstly, the beat. The beat's gotta be the coldest. Like that's my first priority. If the beat can make me move with no bars on it, then I know this thing is mad. So even when I got the pow beat, I was rinsing the beat in my car for months. And I would just start processing people's bars in my head and just thinking, mm, OK, OK, he will sound cool. Then you make the phone calls. The man them come to the studio. There's no emails. There's no, you know, sending man a snippet of the song. I had the CD. Leaf would just hollered at me and didn't really like it at first. But I picked the bit that I wanted to be on. <laughs> Competitive nature. Ten. I, I'm, I, I don't. I can't believe I've not done power yet. I feel like I have, but I really hope 
that I have it because I now want to hear this, especially with all the stuff I've learned about grime in this time. It would be something I think would be really good to watch now because especially now that I have a respect for D-Double, I'm like, oh, that shit about to be crazy because that nigga just sounded mad on that beat. Artist, I want to outdo him. He wants to outdo me. He just captured everything about Graham. What we've done that day is what we do. When I was making Power, I knew I was always going to do a video, and that was because of Channel U. It took us about maybe two weeks to shoot the video. Mo Ali, big him up because he said, I want to do the video, and he's got ideas for every single MC. So he went to 10 different locations. Back then, it was a lot more harder to put things together. We had a more fire party at um, Palace Pavilion because the place is so ramming that we're going to shoot scenes of the video here and then we do the rest of it elsewhere. It was already doing its thing on the streets, but I feel like when Power went on Channel U is when it went to a next step. Channel U was man's billboard. Yeah, well, uh, you're barking up the wrong tree, the spotlight's on me. Channel U ending up being almost like the bedrock of grime was an accident. That was the content that started to come through most. We was at a glass ceiling because we was exceeding everything, all of our limits as producers, MCs, you know, hosts, rave people, DJ, whatever it was, we was exceeding the limits of that. And we go to the rave and everyone sings our lyrics, but you're not allowed on MTV Bass. MTV Bass was only playing crisp video, 20 grand, 30 grand, 50 grand video. We were like the plus one to the party. When Channel U, it was our dance. MTV Bass couldn't go lower. Channel U went to the streets. All those videos that we had had on Lord of the Dex after our interviews, they then got submitted onto Channel U. Now kids seeing you, recognising you off TV. Get ready, there's Dan. Addy is Dan and the R6 man, that's Dan. Don't disrespect Dan. Do you know Dan? You'll get a box from Dan. And you can't rob Dan. Don't put on Dan, because you'll get off my Dan. Straight up and down. Who's... That's Meridian Dan, right? I, I, I'm like, I've never seen this video, and they did not put my, my brother's name on there. Without realizing it, Channel U was a massive part of creating what is now British youth culture. It gave an identity to a generation. Most people who are watching the channel were not informed enough to know that, mate, this guy's not making any money from his music. Because you don't think that far about it. It became very aspirational. Because I now want to see myself on TV. DJ Cable again. One, come two, come three, come four. Stop, and I'll be conking yours. My night, or I'll be conking yours. One, come two, come three, come four. Come, yeah, I'll be conking yours. My night, or I'll be conking yours. Let's go, now go for the ends up on my hoodie, up. When I spit bars, guys, like, pull it up. I'm like, oh, wait, they don't know what they are. And you know, K-Sound, don't give a fuck. Hit licks now, bars, 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 what? Hold on. I need this one. I'm sorry. Y'all got to go through this with me. I look here. I want to shout out Rhythm. I want to see if it's available. No. Shit. Anybody know where I could get that Rhythm at? I would, I would possibly like to share this. She's smoking. Are you really, really from the ends? Are you really, really from the end? Yo, I need to hear that shit. That warp speed by fucking 
by Flirta? Jeez, that shit sound hard. And this and that underground about to sound crazy. There was enough grime tunes on there, bare grime tunes on there at the time. They get me, it was, it was a good time, I can't lie. Channel U was a cold time. I got three yard man, come down. Nah, it's a long thing, man. It's Friday now, I gotta see my man. But your man less of a one night stand. I'm gonna do tracks with you, hang you there off. That's how it goes. Hook me up with a free shot, that he left with off. That's how we roll. Yeah. Who's that nigga? It's different to what if it's a boy nigga. It's a boy right, it's a boy. to the guy so I'm gonna get me a Christian girl I I don't know what it is about Bashy's flow but sometimes like when I hear certain bars for that nigga I'm just like it's actually quite clever my nigga it's quite clever I am the Franks and Savior, Rudo Fravor, Chicken Eater, T High Streeter, Glaze Mo Jumper, Adidas Sneaker, Parada Wearer, Liverpool MC, MC, MC. Two ways, man. Myself, right off. Two ways, man. Draw for the nine off. Two ways, man. Everybody knows two ways. See, I know roadside. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't know, you know what you're going to say. I'm roadside. You want to come to my house? You can't be on the long thing in my house Cause my mum, she soon come back to the house So after the quickie, you have to quickie get out Routine check, I did uh, a check yeah, I did this one check. Sounds like you routinely check Any using G's and Crips You got this and that and that and this part We are not my friends Give tips and you can put all like us Then who it is your bad? You got this and that and that and this part We are not my friends Give tips and you can put all like us Then who it is your bad? The reason why Channel U worked so well was because there was already a culture there. And what they did is they took the culture and they exposed it to an audience that wouldn't necessarily mingle with us. Garage, I don't care about garage. Sons of this, it don't sound like garage. Who told you that I made garage? Willie Cat's got his own sound, it's not garage. They get in the studio and not in the garage. Here in London, there's a sound called garage. But this is my sound, it sure ain't garage. <laughs> I'm Antoine, I own a production company called Mastermind. So in terms of the music videos that we shot back in the day, um, we're like the Rep Your Ends, South, Rep Your Ends, Northwest, SLK, Hype Pipe in uh, Ayanapa, interesting stories. Uh, North Weezy, shot that for BMD, Tubby T, Ready She Ready, Gappy Ranks, Beer Man, Drinking Beer. I know you like to drink strong, bro, cause you wanna get strong like beer. But you'll get beat like a bongo, deep in the woods I'm there, so don't come near. And I know you like to drink Budweiser, cause I'm not mad at this song. <laughs> Somebody link me this one. I want to check this one out too. You want to get wise like brown, but you'll get murked like an insider when he snitches about the town, so. Mastermind was used 
as the in-house production company to film a lot of the, the content, like the Ill Out show. Channel U for us was a godsend. There was no show like that before the Ill Out show. We had, was a godsend. There was no show like that before. Is that, is that motherfucking T.I.? That is Lil John. God damn it. I knew if that is 50, son of a bitch. Before the Ill Out show, we had little features on the show called, you know, Yards, which was our version of Cribs. So you was getting to see inside people's houses and how they live on the daily basis MC and Wong. stuff like that. So you're talking about the first Mr. time Wong. people may have seen Dizzy Rascal being interviewed on television, Skepta being interviewed on television. Gets being interviewed on television. Hey, no. I just want to say good luck on the album, K, man. Thank you. Definitely, man. Go buy that home sweet home. Was it out again? 27th of June. There you go. We're going to see you out of K, no. Peace. Hope you enjoyed the Illout show this season. As, what do you always say about people that didn't enjoy the show? You can email us, man, at kissmy <laughs> at suckmy.com <laughs> or something. Yeah? We're out. <laughs> or email <laughs> these.com. <laughs> <dot com. laughs> <laughs> oh. Or email these.com. <laughs> ah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We can't say these nuts. <laughs> we can. You can. He just gave us the go ahead. <laughs> oh, big tits. What is freedom man? Want to dance? All right, get your ears around this. Whatever ends you're going to at whatever time of night or whatever time of morning or however long you have to wait for crazy Titch to return to his block. You open the door and some dogs just start flying out the door. They weren't running. They were flying. They used to run down the road like, they, we, oh man, Titch was a character. I can see you, you can see me. I can see you, I'm not a DHG. You can see I'm a bad boy MC. Say my name, KZT. I saw you that time. time. You got me like a boo that time. time. On the map, you got through that time. time. I'm on the stage, you got through that time. time. Titch, you saw us that day. day. Your head should have got buffed that day. But it's good you had to hush that day. Bloody when it got rushed that day. I'm Kylie Cusson. I left school at 15 and went on set as a runner. I met a guy called Digital Dan, and we were about 16, he might have been sort of 17, 18, and we opened up a company called Digital Iris, and we were shooting music videos for independent artists. I think the first one was Wong, Not On A Long Age, which was because Dan was friends with Wong. Then we made friends with Good New record. Red Flex, and we shot Gash By The Hour. Oh yeah, I know that one too. That's a classic. <laughs> I made all them lyrics on the 472 bus on the way to my uncle's house. I remember that like it was yesterday. Listen, listen, listen. And I draw gash by the hour. The gash in my stash goes up by the hour. Because if I draw gash by the hour, there's more chance of me getting banged by the hour. So I bang buff gash straight for an hour. If you watch Lord of the Dex 2, in the background of that freestyle, there's a boy with a big afro behind him on the left. It's Da Vinci. Hey, you run flex. Came up to boy and goes, yo, we need to make a tune for that. This brother being long about it, he didn't really transfer. He's got a bunch of beats on one CD. That's how my name used to do at the time, bunch of beats on a CD, but he's giving it to one of our R&B brethren's VB. <laughs> so he's giving his CD to his brother Vidals, and he's trying to do, sing to this tune every day, but it's the gash brother I'll be every day, trying to sing these tunes like, oh, to get these notes. <laughs> Ain't really coming. I'm like, raw, you know what? Let me just get this CD, give it to Boya now. Man's banged it to Boya. You were trying to get Boya in the studio to vocal that tune. I was like, nah, I'm not feeling the fast, you know? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> you weren't feeling the Back in the days, this you guy, know, yeah. the fast, he wasn't feeling, feeling, feeling no one, one bro. You, to get on a strive, he was hard. You know, hard. So I remember, yeah, I was like, nah, I was like, strive. Give me that beat, bro. He's in the yard, all a bit grumpy and stuff. So like, oh, who's this guy? I remember I linked out the first verse. He was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I linked out the hook. He's like, all right. <laughs> then that's when I came with the ad-lib. You need to add the ad-lib. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we were like, yeah, my guy. Like, these are cool me now. These are cool me now. Yo, gonna that I said, yo. This tune's a bit over fire, you know. We might, might have to do one of them things, you know, like in those big American videos where they got the little thing at the end where you got a next tune. And we just, yeah. Strava goes, I got the beat for that. Play some next dum, da dum, da dum. I said, nah, 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 nah. I draw gash by the hour. Gash in my slash loads up by the hour. If I draw gash by the hour, more chance I'ma get banged by the hour. Bang, 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 What's she fighting like she don't show face? She knows when she gets down with Vito, she's always gonna make a comeback like me. 
big up Carly's mum as well because that car at the start was hers. Her mum's car. You know what I mean? House. The house, that was her mum's car. Uh, you know what I mean? The taxi, yeah. you were like, what are we going to write? You know what's so bad? You know so bad? Mom's when we got busy to shoot dancing with video, yeah? He's like, listen, you see that scene where boy's in that bed? I need a scene just like that for dancing me. You see what? I need a scene just like that. Girls rubbing on me, everything. Just like that scene. I was like, but that's Carly's bed. You weren't even, you weren't even no plush thing, but you know what? When people see something, it's what they see. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So, and at this time, as a group, as new brand Flex, the original formation of it, we're kind of like inter-competing with ourselves because people, a lot of people forget Tiny Tempers, new brand Flex. So now I'm like, okay, cool, solo thing. I need records. So I started chatting to a producer called Flukes on MSN, yeah? And then Flukes had sent me wifey initially and then he'd sent me like hood economics or something like that so i've just met this guy and he sent me two bangers three bangers off the bat so before you know it, our vocal the record is popping off and then i just hear what another version and then i hear another version then i hear another version then i hear another version and all, all of those versions are making my version bigger but then i'm hearing another version another version of, so i'm like do you know what yeah like I need to just do a video for this and I need to put this out like immediately, yeah. Striver introduced me on MSN to a guy called Tiny who came around my house for pizza. Actually, it wasn't even my house, it was my mum's house because we were like teenagers. Um, and we worked out how to do this music video. I remember going to like Carly and Digital Dan and being like, I need an Audi, I need a mansion and I want to have a car crash. Then they looked at me and they were like, what, for eight bills? And so I think they ended up pulling a couple of favours. Like using, like, my granddad's cab, the house was my house, the car was my mum's, Tiny bought another car, he bought a girl, someone used their friend's chicken shop. Like, it was just everybody, you know, bringing to the table. I did the submissions process, and that's how I first ever had contact with Channel U. And then before you know it, I had this video. It went to number one and it just kind of just stayed there. You ring me off the nightly, got precisely nine tightly, gonna be off. But you were one time, like 10 o'clock, but that's life B. I know y'all slayed him for like, wifey not really being considered like a grime tune, though he's like a, considered a grime MC initially. This, the production is cold though. Like that shit stands up. It's 2023 and I'm still like, that's a good beat, yo. Like. Like men, men is still rap on that today. Like it's that good. You are my wife, you look right. We get head to the side, blue jeans, nice shoes, and they get on top. Like shoes from basement to men on rock. You are a real chick, that's why I move to get real quick. But all of a sudden, I find out they've signed it to a label, and they've got Sadie Ammer on it, and that's the official thing, and it's called Fallen and Done. It's very mad because um, to go back, back the gas by the hour. After that video was shot, a lot of people don't know this, but that's the video that got Dan and Carly their job. It's actually what, what for me, that's the changing of the guard. Like, the mastermind troopers were the people that were working at Channel U at that time, and they kind of control all the shows, Ill Out Show, everything. So the formation of how the channel looked, its imagery, its whole demure, it was kind of based on them. Once that old guard was gone, and then Dan and Carly came in, then that's when you get the, the new type of content. So the content kind of similarly has our type of feel to it. I think Darren noticed that me and Dan were doing really wacky shit and said, um, oh, can you come and do in-house filming? We went in-house, we were doing TV shows. Me and Dan did the last series of the Ill Out show. We were like filming constantly. They run like four or five pilots of different shows. I think there was ones called Unthugged, the jazzy show, there was all sorts going on. I used to be a proper fan of Channel U. At the time, there was obviously MySpace. I, know, I hit up a guy called Digital Dan. I said, yo, listen, I'm a cameraman. Bear in mind, I never did camera. Like, I wasn't, that wasn't my thing. I just wanted to be in the building. I was like, look, I'm a cameraman. I'm ready to do anything, whatever. Like, I get a reply, I think, like, the following week. And he was like, yeah, man, come down. I got a show at Ministry of Sound. Tiny Tempo was performing. New Brown Flex were there as well. I was filming. The video came out shit, obviously, on my side, because obviously I couldn't film. And then he was like, you know what? Like, forget about the whole filming stuff, because obviously you're not really good at it, but you could be a runner. So I was just like, yo, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. I came to the game and did what you couldn't. I sprayed the flame and spit how I should. Fakes are bait, they're acting big. I believe you, but I know millions wouldn't. So during the time when I was being a runner at Channel U, I must have said to Digital Dan, I was like, yo, bro, you know what? We should do something like comical, like some comedy or whatever, you know what I mean? Because where I was, 
a lot of the men in that were on road, they were like real funny. So I'm like, look, bro, man, like, I've got this show idea, bro, yeah? And he was like, yeah, but you're bare shy, and I don't know if you've got the swag for in front of the TV and whatever. And I was like, look, I know it could bust, like. So he was like, all right, cool, like, let me know. So me and Dan came up with the Jazzy show. Yeah, go and get yourself a little drink in that. Let me just finish off my work. Is that your girlfriend, do your yeah? Thing. Yeah, fam. Oh, you're a bad guy. You I know, know, I know. You're <laughs> asking for it. Sorry, that might end you, Hey, babe. No, I'm not at all. Hey, right. Pierre. Hey, yeah. before you start, I beg you take a picture of me real quick. I definitely hey, want a hey, picture. Hey, if it's go in there or something, can you know what I'm saying? OK, we want yeah? to take some pictures of you. Hey, nasty, must be catching the picture. Hello, hi. Top of the morning to you, nasty oh. n double n dubs. <laughs> Whoa! It's like an Eric Andre show. Huh? I was just, I was just here with, no listen, ask Nasty. I didn't do nothing. I was just here with Nasty, just doing his eye then. Right, Nasty, please tell her what I was doing. Oh, do you know what, Dion, I'm going to show you what he's doing. As soon as that went out, it just went crazy from there. Bro, it was on like it was EastEnders. Like, every day it was on. It was on at 5 o'clock on a Thursday. It was on again at oh, 10 o'clock on Thursday. Hood. It was on again at 3 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. It was on again at 8 o'clock in the morning on Friday. It was just madness. And it's Bruiser, get me! Bruiser, get me! Maybe I stay sharp, get me! Cause I'm ace boss, get me! And that's Bruiser, get me! It's Bruiser, get me! Bruiser, get me! Maybe I stay sharp, get me! definitely hired so many people that were unqualified just down to their passion. Everybody was not supposed to be in a music video channel office. And you know what I liked about Channel U as well? They just said, you lot do what you want. Like, know, you bro. just literally had whatever you wanted. The younger generation, scripts, older though. generation, there's too many videos. Uh. It's the one crazy. I will just like, like see like, oh, those other man. artists that I'll obviously come through with, like having their videos and watching on Sky, and that was like the next big step. Chinese boy when it comes to me, Chinese boy, and I'm a typical Chinese boy when it comes to me, I need to hear this orchestra fucking, what's this shit called? Orchestra burrows? Like, some of you remind me, like, the joints that say I won't watch, because I'm like, I for sure watch that shit. Chinese boy when it comes to me, fuck my Chinese boy, and I'm a typical Chinese boy when it comes to me, fuck my Chinese boy, and I'm a Chinese boy, and I get my dialogue on my Chinese boy. Yucky, time say who block, and I go some Chinese boy. It was only on the channel for like a month and a half, and then they flipping banned it because there was um, a scene in the vid where two dogs are barking at each other and they were like, oh, someone complained that, you know, dog fighting or whatever is violence. And I was thinking, oh, that's an idiot thing, bro. Yo, Eastwood Beats, 2003, no late. I used to be in a crew called Too Good To Be True. A gentleman called Crafty took me down to Polydor and I met someone called Ben Palmer. He worked closely with a gentleman called Big that is from Shepherd's Bush. And he said, well, I've got this group called Unorthodox that consists of two guys. Do you want to meet them? So I heard Silver and G-Kid spit, and I was like, let's do it. Now you know they represent in Sark. Hey, the baddest female spit around. Don't get it twisted. This girl's too hot. I didn't even like No Help No Handouts. I didn't like the beat. I didn't want to do it at first. And Silver was like, you need to be first on the song. So we recorded it, and then a guy called Tommy heard it. And Tommy was like, let's shoot it. We can move where we want, no jurisdiction. Close up shift away, you're causing friction. And our spit, what you call it, addiction. We'll see what happens, might not get a billion away. When Nole released, no Yo, shout out to Nole, yo. <laughs> she been doing this for time. I hope no handouts with all of her goons in the ends in tees, and she was just that rugged girl. This is maybe the first video that got my attention that made me say, wow. Who are these not? When I heard that, yeah, I remember thinking, fuck it, that girl's got, she's flames. I just like their whole style, even the brother with um, the mad hat and the glasses. I just already, I see, I said, whoever he is, he's on smoke. But these guys are mad lyrical. We don't need no help or handouts, don't put your grand out, we can manage. And we don't need no more talent, my fans will balance with excess baggage. Now 
we don't want to clap, that's long Cause we heard your tracks and you sound swaggish We spit facts, you tell lies That's why we're gonna be here for your Cause you're like she not big boy up on this beat I'll be so I remember like following all of them around and like the crowd was just growing and 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 then his idea was to put it on Channel U and then the day like when I was told that it was on TV I was like wow this is it for me I'm gone No more patience left in me I've been waiting patiently for the whole time When Tink Strada went from Tings in Boots in Sidewinder spitting with Dizzy and Wiley to them bang biggest selling male artists in Britain that transition was Channel U. Channel U made you feel like you don't need to be sad. Well, you can afford, do it, and we'll take care of that. To be honest, before that, there was other people within the area, within East, that were close to, to had blown in away, like the Wiley, Dizzy Rascal. So it wasn't new to us, but to have someone from the actual crew, it felt special. <laughs> One of the powerful moments for me was mainstream money. After mainstream money hit, that's when the labels took him serious and he was able to um, lock in some record deals and go further into that world. And while I was saying as well, I'm thinking, nah, this year I'm trying to get mainstream money and I was really meant it. This year I'm trying to get mainstream money, spending bakes and ice cream money. Please don't get caught up, man, lies and a broken, it's still way making money. Batting a man on no goods or bait, sing, sing, swim in a black like H. Then man catch what the rumors about, that's when man for the food is about. I think with Tinchy, it made sense. He just had star quality already, man. He was just a star, man. If, if, he, if he didn't do that, he would have been a baller. He was always going to be something. I made the beat, yeah? Because it's meant to be an essential song in general, but then I wanted it to expand a bit more. Around that time, I was really close with J2K and Dynasty. Don't get it twisted, this ain't the same. I'm J, listen, this ain't a game. Been here for a little while, nothing changed. Just more same and the same and the same. Just knowing them man from the circuit and that, do you get me? Like, just bumping each other, like, greeting each other. And he, and he was always, like, a, a guy that would, like, reach out, do you get what I'm saying? They were clever. Yeah. That was a good one. Rem was a G for that still. Even, I remember he was sitting, where was he sitting? He was sitting in some kind of dock or something, like some yeah. mad tech kind of looking spaceship shit. It was cold. That was cold, man. It was early. Yeah, shout out to Centrals for that. It was early still. My love for the scene grew really quickly. And I think that it was obviously like very much about kind of the people and the passion. You kind of really got to figure out like what this whole like, you know, grime scene like was built on. Seeing some of those videos at first was just like, oh my gosh. But like there was the maddest connection to it. It's like you couldn't help but love it because when you were in the thick of it and you were kind of like dealing with people like on a daily basis and speaking to them and like, you know, kind of understanding what had gone into it. And on top of it, everyone was finding their own way. Do you know what I mean? Like I just kind of like jumped in feet first into this position. Like the grime scene was finding its like, you know, feet in the world. It was another piece to the puzzle. Channel U actually was the mecca of having a space where you could do a tune and a video with 15 men. That was kind of the pattern at that time as well in terms of collectives getting together and just jumping on tracks. I had the hook, I was, where do we come from? I had that, I had that. But I never had a beat, so I was asking everyone for a beat. Ribs, he said to me, if Mondi made one beat, that I think will suit that. He played me the beat, I said, yeah. This is it. I took the beat, I said to Ribs, I said, do you want to be on it? He goes, nah, don't worry, I'll fall back. They get me? I said, cool, say no more. That's it. And I proceeded. Where do we come from? North Weezy! How do we make money? Real easy! How do we hate girls? That's sleazy! Yeah. From North Weezy! Where do we come from? North Weezy! How do we make money? Real easy! How do we hate girls? That's sleazy! Yeah. Believe me! I put a North West City where things are green, but I walk in it. I was confused, I was confused of the impact. Cause I, I just started from here just to just to put my area on because we're not getting shouted out in the club. Then boom, from there, you know, North Wheezy on the map. It's kind of like what 21 Seconds did for So Solid. Those like relays and in it. kind of gave loads of artists an opportunity to shine in a small space of time. Southside, that's where it's coming from. Southside, that's where I'm coming from. When I say South, you say Runty. South, Runty. South, Runty. When I say Runty, you say South. Runty. South, Runty. Runty. What 
is bad there as a youngster going to East London and Gala saying raw G to the I and but I, to be honest, when I when I laid the track and I laid the bar, I didn't think it was gonna be as big as it was. I just went in the studio. I remember at the time being kind of even a little bit nervous. You're seeing big artists like Nicky S and Nike, nasty, you understand? Laid the bar and then on the day of the video shoot, when my part came on, everyone was singing the bar and I was like, wow, this is mad. Getting on the eight bar rhythm. Well, firstly, it'll be who you know to start off with. If you're like close to the people that's on the track or who's formulating the track, then that'll be your way through still. I made up a little set, say, you know what, cool, we're going to get the four crews from the ends, get the biggest producer from the ends, which was Protégé at the time. He had the silence and rhythm going at them times. He had loads of rhythms it's popping big, at that time. Active, he's active, he's active. Everybody rock hard, sing your hands in the air. When you hear, sing your hands in the air. Sing your hands in the air. When you hear, sing your hands in the air. Hey, show your hands in the air. Oh, fuck, what is, somebody send me this beat. Like, what's the name of this one actually? Like, so I can find this one, because I sell that bitch too. This shit hard. in Proto J studio and he was like raw someone come upstairs I can't remember who and they were like raw it's on it's on the channel you bro and everyone ran downstairs and watched it and like raw look cold you get me <laughs> like when I saw the end product and then after that everyone was just like obviously it was my space and all them things there my space was like Tom Tom yeah, Tom <laughs> oh yeah that's your first friend didn't it yeah the first friend in that <laughs> one like Tom. Jesus <laughs> oh. it's the girl from Sugar yeah, yeah. this is the girl from Sugar he cool. got all the girl from he Man. did, yeah, got all the girls because he's got the same hair in his head that he had then, innit, so... <laughs> See, for me, like, in a way, in a strange way, like, Channel U kind of brought structure, car, MCs, like, would get bookings and do sets. <laughs> gonna go back to back with your brethren or whatever, you get me? Whoever's in your crew or whatever. Because of Channel U and now man are putting out songs, it's kind of changing the PA format, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that was probably what first made artists start performing songs. I don't know if anyone could ever talk about Channel U, yeah? Right, and favorite songs and not talk about Summertime Merxton. We can't not do that. Oh, yeah, I'm like, cause you're like, I'm so aware that it's summertime. There was a tour with a little time to walk here, but I come back. Basically, what I'd done, people would say that my music was like a, a sweet boy's sort of side of gram, like a sweeter side of gram for the girl to bubble to. Oh, yeah. It's about a week later, yeah. and I'm billing you. Yeah. You're like, who are you? My name's Aaron. What are you, Darren? No, my name's Aaron. 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 I come at the barber's by scooter and roll, and the sun was beaming, and your body looked swollen. Your clothing matched the bag you was holding. Was holding. Was holding. Was holding. I thought, let me get approach this junkie. I've been gazing for too long, thinking. It's not like the girl weren't winking. She had her hair down with a little kink, and I like it. The swag was on point, and you know what I'm saying? So I made sure that there was a certain colour and look to what we was putting out, and I knew that it would kind of do well. I think I paid about two grand for that, two and a half grand, two grand for that. I don't have the original now, you know what I'm saying? But at the time, the quality was really good. When you look back, you're like, but at the time, I feel like that set me apart from what was at. Oh, man, yes, no, so you just can't stand stress. She comes in. What do you mean by I can't stand stress? Back then, it was more like the grime MC thing, so it was everybody spitting, 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 but I was more like, the artists were look out for the girl him. So when I'm going out, doing the grime thing or whatever, a gal, I come forward, you understand? Gal wants the doctor. Stop, make me walk over. Girl, y'all just read the end, girl. A big accident, you want for your car. You for the end of the newspaper. Joker. You have a man, yeah. well, me guess, cause you look real stressed, but for real. DVLA for put up on them has a test. <laughs> I mean, Doctor, it, from then till now, still one of the most talented artists I've worked with. I mean, we ended up doing two videos for that because he didn't like the first one. What channel you did for that tune, Got A Man, was, was special. The way that went off, crazy. Girl, them loved that tune. Wherever I went, that's the tune the girls them wanted to hear. All right, it's ironic right now, yeah? My thing was interaction. As soon as we put out the first single, So Nice, I would go to my website, my MySpace, 
tell everyone to keep voting for me every week. Any shows I'm at, make sure you vote for me on Channel U. Those were the real charts for me back then. It weren't even about the national UK charts. I'm in love with the way that you smile and the way that you look in my eyes. So nice. I'm in love with the things that we do when we go out, it feels right. So nice. I'm in love with the way that we chat all night, get along and have no fights. Who says relationships can't work out? I swear, man, that's not right. Look. Even though he brings up my name at the start, yeah, shout out to the real don't kid. I know I made that tune to this day. I used to get a lot of people's MSNs from their MySpace. Like, used to be on the side. And I'll just message people, like, here's a tune, here's a tune, here's a tune. I sent him that tune, didn't really think anything of it. When we put it on the MySpace, a lot of people started loving it. I just remember seeing it on repeat all day on Channel U. Just me and the fields walking through it. So I was gassed, I was famous from there. Honorable shout out to DJ Ironic, it's so nice. I know the girl in the video, yeah. He said it's so nice a whole bunch of times, but you know what, he had bars. He did his thing before DJ Khaled did his thing. And DJ <laughs> Khaled didn't bar. <laughs> I don't want to fall in love, but she looks like she fell from above. I got loads of girl tunes just on the low, so obviously, like, I showed someone and they were just going mad about it. And I showed Mo and they were just like, no, we're shooting this now. When I think of you, I forget the gun rhymes, think of fun times. When you're at my side at sunrise, teasing me when caressing your thighs. You've always got the good advice for twist you and my franchise. Got the eyes, some guys fantasize about. You always turn heads like roundabout. The response from that was crazy when it came to the girls. I didn't know. Like when I was writing it or when I recorded it, they would be like that, but yeah, it was good, it was wicked. Girls are going crazy still. What's this though? E14 promotions. This is Bomb Squad. Channel U elevated Bomb Squad and put us on the map. B-O-M-B squad, that new NV Boston, and you can't compare to we on my family, we went away, you see. B-O-M-B squad, that new NV Boston, and you can't compare to we on my family, we went away, you see. I waited like near enough, like three hours. I was like, oh, I just love myself going on TV. And I felt like I just left the room and I just said, Can you see that? Like, yeah, yeah. For a moment, I lost mm -hmm. myself. I actually got my auntie to shoot the video for, um, for I Just Wanna. It's really in house, that one. Yeah, that one's in house still. <laughs> we doing all this highlighting. Who the hell is this auntie? Did she not film any other music videos? Because if this is her work right here, she had to shoot other music videos. Because this is quality work. Who's this auntie? As a young kid, I used to listen to Flirter. Flirter's like a legend where I'm from in Northwest London. So, like, me even being on a song with him and then it being on TV, I could tell you the girls were on me, like... I'm doing it, doing it for my age, so keep doing it, doing it my way, keep watching the back off. I ain't got contacts, but if she's on it, she might be part of the contacts. Hey, this piece sound hard. I remember, I was in the studio with... JJC Skills, he's the producer for Big Brothers, and he put me in a room with Feng Shui. J-Rock, a member of the Big Brothers, he had Cherie's little brother, Ice Kid, and then I had my cousin there, Sick Man. The next minute, we have a banger. Ice Kid, I'm potent, highly toxic like solvents. MCs talk breeze like air vents. I've been through hatred and torment. Ice Kid, I'm potent, highly toxic like solvents. MCs talk breeze like air vents. I've been through hatred and torment. You know I get brushed, my you. Best if you're the dust, my you. That boy, the cat touch, my you. Best if you're the dust, my you. You know I get brushed, my you. Best if you're the dust, my you. That boy, the cat touch, my you. Best if you're the dust, my you. And it was a soul channel, you. Slim T recording, yeah, Slim T brings to you on the keys the big, big link up. Well, the link up was something that was inspired after I see what Leaf will be done with Power, you know. At that time, I was listening to a lot of Little John, that whole Atlanta sound. I thought, like, let me That's make snap something era, baby. close to that, but with a little grime element. With Kelly LaRock on the hook, she was like known in Garage. She was the female, she done big tunes in Garage. I thought if I put her on the hook and just put all the man them on it and we made Link Up. None of them flow like we, make club raise up like we again. None of them flow like we, we're superstars, superstars. Take my time, we just make you pause, rewind. Come and add your flow to your 
I knew I wanted to make the video like crazy. I reached out to Mo Ali. We shot some in London, we shot some out of London. And um, at that time, it was a very expensive video for that time. And we done it and we got through it and it came out. And And people liked it, and it just became like a massive video on Channel U. Yeah, 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 I know this one. Three selected producer, rapping on the button. Top three selected MC, MC, G, G, K. Done, no, no, movement all day. I remember seeing top three selected for the first time. What? Three selected, you were not me, forget this. Me plus eight on a guest list, you can't even suggest it. Fuck it, stick. I paid like five grand for that video, and obviously, that at the time, that was even breaking. Where the fuck are these niggas getting this money? Jesus Christ! The the numbers, the lowest money I've heard spent on a music video in this entire thing is Tenchi Striders, no Tiny Temper, his fucking uh, whatever that fucking rhythm is. Uh, the the one that they shot with old girl, that man said eight bills. That's the smallest number I've heard man talk about on this entire thing. Like what the, where are these niggas getting this money? In my back, and everybody was like, "Are you paying that?" But you gotta remember, every time I've dropped, yeah, them times it's a level set in business. You know what I'm saying? There's no introduction needed. I'm a genius, and I'm even schooling singers. Next year, Porsche, Beamers, nothing like a caution. I'm serious. I'm far from short of experience. It banged in in our world, but I didn't feel like it banged in the Channel U world. Just seeing what was getting a reaction on Channel U and all the stuff that was in heavy rotation, I could see that the demographic was slightly younger than man. And if I'm being honest, that was the first time I actually really adapted to making something, and I could see the ringtone thing going off. And that's why I made Don't Phone Me. Don't act like you don't see me around. You see me every day in the yes. I'm up, mix takes and I boot to the yeah. I might be going up north for the week. If I come back on the baseline, yeah. that don't mean that I think grind. Yeah. Never that time, I'll keep it alive. Everyone knows what I represent. Don't phone me, just cause you got my number. Don't ask what I'm on, don't ask what I'm on. Don't phone me, just cause you got my number. I hate don't film me, I hate it, I hate it. I adapted to something. If that was the first time you was introduced to me, you would have thought that's who I was. It's not to say that weren't a banger, but I just rather it weren't in my catalog. <laughs> I think obviously, yeah, it started out with business. Do you know what I mean? And I think for what quickly, I think he quickly established was that he absolutely had this passion for it. And I think the thing with Darren, that I think a lot of people grew to know about him was that he had, a very big heart and he loved everything that like the grime scene stood for um what it was all about and i think that it quickly became apparent that it probably wasn't going to generate much money but he was going to keep going with it because he absolutely loved it and everything about it all oh, right cut, cut the evening if you're going to get now just say we're big like even just cut the ea out let's go come lads yeah man come let's have it EA Sports were running a competition. I already had a bar, I'm big like EA, whatever. It was always a, a known in money already. So we entered that competition, me shifting Blizzard, but like, as Mayhem, but Mayhem was a bigger crew. There's enough of us in it, won it. So they said, we'll shoot you a video. Was gassed. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Man was gassed. Everyone was gassed. Everyone from the ends was gassed. Like, yeah, I used to come past my like, big like, yeah, yeah, that was. You get me? Man was gassed them times, but yeah, it was sick in it, obviously. And them times, yeah, obviously got a video on a telly. You, you've done it. <laughs> Where straps I see more than dads Cause they clap at these boring actors Not everyone's big with hard weight Not everyone thinks they're Scarface It gets busy when their plans evolve And they end up in a can for coke I hope you're seven like you When it was on there, there was definitely a sense of arrival Because TV's TV, man You know what I mean? There's only so far me and Getz were gonna go with 50 CDs in our rucksack Going up and down, leaving it in the shop doing sale and return. This shop hasn't heard of you in Birmingham, so they only want to take five, but you've driven all the way up there. I'm just like, you know what, just take 20. I'm not coming back for no money, but I just don't want you to run out. Hard life. Hard life. 
That's what I'm about to explain to you right now, man. Let me let the tune breathe a bit. Everyone was doing like the eight bar switches and all that. You had the youngers doing all the eight bars, but I feel like with me, I always liked making proper substance music anyway from a young age. Being around the likes of Getz, Kano, and all these people and Rust God, um, they used to make bare songs. The world's gone man, everybody's walking with knives. If not knives, it's knives. If not knives, it's mad. This beat is cold. Where is this one available? The world's gone man, everybody's walking with knives. If not knives, it's knives. If not knives, it's max. Too much guns on the road, this is a known fact. I'm not trying to preach everyone, not saying that I don't roll with the that roll with the guns. I'll be lying to you, and that ain't the one, no way. Hey, when Hard Life came out, we do what, hey, ah, oh, man. I remember going back to college, I was in first year college, and hey, the response was just crazy. Everyone was like, oh, I swear, you're that, you're that guy, that Hard Life guy, innit? You're that guy, that Hard Life guy. I felt like I was a hood celeb. <laughs> I didn't even think it would do anything special. Like, we just wanted to be in the same pool that everyone... That's a nice little sweater. I'm not mad at that. That's... My nigga came out dressed. This is what I'm talking about. We're doing interviews and shit. Else was in. Get me in, went to number one, so I, I can't complain. Yaga, yo. You know who it is, isn't it? It's scripts and poet to bomba. I know this beat. Them days, seeing is mad believing. So if it's on television, you're doing something right. So the fact that me and Scribs were on television, like, our, our family couldn't chat shit, and they were good at that. Wow, my first name's Paul, and my government style. What a simple rum style, so you're never gonna know. Your chest up like gas, but you're never gonna know. Think you're a pro when you rhyme slow, but you don't even know that you're never gonna know. And you can't get a wall, so you're never gonna know. Struggling to get a deal, but you're never gonna know. But you flow sick, but you sound like a prick, and you're girls in my dick, so you're never gonna know. By that time, in grime, Everyone knew who you were if you were someone, and <laughs> we weren't someone, so I'd imagine we pissed off a lot of people when we dropped that video. Yeah, what's the deal? What, Mr. Merkel? Seco! I was having a big tune, so I knew I needed to get ready for my visuals, but I needed to make my thing. I needed to take this TV thing to, I need to be a superhero, fam. I need, I need some. Superhero team. What like, bro? Yeah, bring that. I'll shut the high road down, bro. The whips are stopped like this. What's happening? There's a black dreadlock superhero. What? what <laughs> why? It's the Marco man. Never gonna be the Marco man. Cause yeah, it's the Marco man. Who for the green and purple man? Cause it's the Marco guy. Never gonna flex the Marco guy. Cause yeah, it's the Marco guy. Who for the green and purple? Yeah, I had it in the video to cap. Put it on the channel. Cool, videos rotating, I'm gassed. Obviously, man in the yard, man are texting up, telling everybody to text to get to see the video. I didn't think past, rah, my shoes on TV, man's gassed, you get me? That was it. And then I started to go out. <laughs> Once it popped on channel U, that was when I saw an actual change because these records were getting so big that now MTV had to collar me. They had to holler me. It was too big. It was too, it was too much happening without them. It really changed my life. It changed everybody else's life around me. Everyone that was making hard, innovative shit, and that was actually a good artist, it changed their life. It was such like a hub. People all of a sudden were able to start building careers like video directors, modeling agencies, like PR companies, radio pluggers, like all these different things. Channel U it wasn't just a platform for artists, it was for filmmakers as well because there's so many people out there that wanted to be a music video director, but until Channel U, you couldn't get, what, are you gonna direct music videos for Usher? No, like, you'd never get your visuals on TV otherwise. Channel U definitely helped in terms of, like, you know, the growth of independent labels. People were actually able to go from start to finish on a release, and they didn't have to achieve, like, an MTV viable video or anything. It was like, we became that stepping stone between the underground and the mainstream. And it's even to do the vocals. You know exactly what he's doing. Perfect. Listen to this. Not out of key, one bit. Real music, bro. In Dubs 2008, bro.
end up probably capitalized off of Channel U the most. Na, na, na. <laughs> platform was already moving, Channel U was already going, so we felt like that was the place for us to go and put our music. I remember the first video going on to Channel U, um, we waited up like to about four o'clock in the morning for it to come on for one spin, and that I can't begin to tell you at that time, it was the most overwhelming feeling of happiness you could ever imagine. It was the fact that we was actually on TV. We released another record called Better Not Waste My Time and um, it had Daffy in the pram, you remember, with a thing coming out, no, 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 and that, like, that was like a memorable moment for the scene because it was like, oh my gosh, what's this? Is this a parody video or is it not a parody video? Actually, listen to the content, it's actually a serious video. It's like first things first, yeah. you probably think I'm a chat with good manners, where you're wrong, I'm the scum of the earth. It was just the way they were doing their videos. They were creative and it was funny and it was catchy. And those knocked us off, you know. Yeah. We shall use number one for time. <laughs> you better not waste my time. I got better things on my mind. I need to leave jerks like you behind. Can't ever do is just bring me down. I first obviously got to know Endubs just by them coming in. Cat was really um one of the people that really rooted for us in Channel U and pushed for our videos to be played a lot. She had a lot of belief in us. Just watching their growth on the channel what, and like watching the reaction, it was something that like none of us had ever seen before. We was part of their journey and we helped in some way to get them where they are. Obviously, we didn't get them where they are, but we helped along their journey, which makes me proud. They're asking us, what song would you play if you had one more minute to live? And what do we go and put down? End of, I swear. Sing along, baby. 2006. When we dropped that record, we went from being known locally to being like everywhere. I swear, I swear, I missed the times when you would tie me to a chair and tease me from the back of my neck up to my ear. She would have me to herself, she didn't want nobody else. But I, see, that was at the time. What you were hearing was story writing as well as sick bars, as well as sick delivery, and then the acting in the video. Who the hell shoes are these? I thought they were your new Nikes. Don't take me for a fool, I don't wear shoes like these, so don't lie to me. Where's he hiding? I know you got a man up in it, so why the f*** you lying? Yeah. And we knew at the time that we had something special, and we knew when that once that one touched, we was gone, and praise the most high. <laughs> there, there we flew. Oh, my gosh, N-dubs. Um, yeah, the channel you basically is end up. We're not gonna lie. Man took me to one of their shows one time, and it was like it was the first time I see um, you know, like proper pandemonium, bro. You know, like fanatic. You know, fans short for fanatic, but I see, I see fanatic that day. You know what I'm saying? I was like, right, that's crazy. Did it feel like, you know, you were really creating this new platform and making a difference in the British music scene at the time? Do you know what? Um, when we look back at it now and see what the channel like stood for and achieved and the differences it made and everything, like you can really see the difference. But it was a very difficult business to run. We had like the authorities watching what was going on. Nobody wanted wanted to invest. Like we were way too grimy. Do you know what I mean? Like no one took it seriously. If it had just been a business and that's what it was about for Darren, Channel U would have finished years before it did. There's two stories to Channel U. There's the, the public face where the channel's doing well, it's growing its audience numbers. Rest in peace to the boy Stormin. Really interesting and relevant things. And there's the business side of it, which was much more difficult. On the business side, the story of Channel U is very much the legal battle it had through almost its whole life with the royalty collection societies and the major labels. Running a TV channel on the Sky Network is expensive because obviously the way we were viewed by like the mainstream, what we were generating in income, it was very, very small. But our VPL license was huge. We were paying a lot more in royalties than MTV were paying. It was Buzz and Chart Show against oh, that's the major hurt. record labels. We'd spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands in legal fees. Plus we'd spent a lot more than we should have done in royalties. And that's really what brought the channel down. The case was actually decided 
post Channel U's demise in our favour, but it was too. The case was actually decided post Channel U's demise in our favour, but it was too late for us. You know, he had the weight of the whole industry on his shoulders, really. You know, and again, it's only becoming a bit, a bit older and a bit more wiser that I kind of look back and was like, that's a lot of pressure, you know. Its major advertising sales agency went bankrupt, owing us hundreds of thousands of pounds as well. So then all of a sudden, Channel U was with no advertising. So Darren's having to put his own money into it. Darren's having to kind of finance his whole channel. Yeah, he was he was stressing. I remember us sitting in a hotel bar. You know, he was talking about changing the channel. The business by that time had picked up a lot of debt. He was advised to put the company into administration because I've got previous experience in insolvency. I gave him some more advice and he took it. He then created a new channel. He comes to me and says, Luke, I need, I need a logo for Channel AKA. What kind of fucking name is AKA? Like, that made no sense. It kind of did in the end, like, it's funny enough, but I've done the Channel AKA logo on a bit of paper and a laptop in about 20 minutes after 15 pints of beer. Done it rough for him and said, look, you know, we'll, we'll make it better. And maybe next week when we're not drunk. And he's like, no, I love it, I love it. And that was it. Kind of shitty looking logo became <laughs> the AKA logo. You had this um, obviously sustained run of success with the channel and this kind of yeah golden era for it where everything was videos again, lots of views, artists were blowing up. When did you get a sense that things were changing um, and the channel was headed towards an eventual kind of decline? Um, the dynamic changed because what happened was that where you'd get like people like phoning you up and being like, oh my God, I've literally just got my video back like right now, can I come and bring it straight over? Like the channel would be the first place that you would see the visual. And slowly but surely what would happen is, and especially like, you know, because we couldn't fit every single video on, and obviously also because we then had to, you know, edit them and make sure they were compliant and everything. And what we started to find happening was, obviously people would then start uploading them to YouTube first. What was killing um, Chaniyu at that time, unbeknownst to, to Darren, was actually SPTV. And he actually had an offer with a, a business partner, um, and I was at the meeting randomly, I don't know why, it was in some random carvery, and I was in there, and they, he was offered to um, buy um, SPTV, and he turned it down. A week later, he was with a, a web designer, and he's got this web designer said, yeah, fuck that, I'm gonna make an app, and it's gonna be the Channel U app, and kids are gonna download the videos direct and, and, and vote for it, download, and he made this Channel U app um, thing. That. And that was what he thought was gonna counteract SPTV. And that's but more or less the downfall. This is not tactical, what I'm about to say now, but it, it is true. Darren approached Rashid, Rashid and said, could we, hire you for the channel and he said no 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 I've I've got my I've got my own plans I'm gonna start up link up and and I remember on set going just Rashid shut up don't be stupid come work for the channel what do you want a website for and then that became um a, a platform where you could go back to being unfiltered and and it drove all that passion back into the music because it had always been built on like passion it um it was, it became, it lost the excitement. As much as the love was still there for it, the excitement went because it stopped becoming that destination and like you stopped being that place that everyone wanted to rush to to give the videos to and everything else. And it almost became like a little bit of an afterthought for a while. When he had his um, first heart attack, I think it completely changed his outlook on a lot of things, and like particularly life and his home life. All of a sudden, like he started to realise that he would need to take that little step back from it and probably focus a bit more on like what actually mattered back at home and everything. And I remember him phoning me and saying, like, what do you think, Kat? Like, you know, should we, um, should we sell the channel? And he'd, and he'd speak to me as if it was mine as well. Do you know what I mean? And I think, like, over those years, he'd given me so much ownership and control of it that it felt like that. And I remember just being like that. Well, yeah, like, I think it's probably time. And, you know, and then that was it. Like, it, and he said, like, you know, you've always got a job with me. Like, you can always work for me. But, like, you know, I, I think that that was my point to be like, I really need to go and do my thing now, you know, but P 
people slowly just started to like drift into different directions anyway, like Hype City had closed a long time before that. I remember doing business with Darren for a good few years. What started to happen was bigger booking agencies that still exist today started coming in and signing these guys on an exclusive basis based on their backstory, whether it's Kylie Minogue or X, Y, and Z. And by then, I was just like, you know what, fair play, the business is doing what, it's, it, what it was meant to do. Um, let's just close up shop. Carly and Dan had kind of separated a little bit and then Carly started like kind of going off and doing her thing as well. When the building got robbed, I was in it. Then got called into the office and asked questions that I felt were insinuating, did I rob the kit? And I was just like, all the effort that I've put into this, I felt like that this is a bit unfair. And the other big reason was I'd worked for Darren for eight years on the same salary, which was pretty low. We were talking and I said, like, yeah, I'm really struggling at the moment financially. Like, is there any way we can talk about a promotion? And he was like, no, I'm not, I'm, there's no point. Uh, for me, but then he wanted to hire a she, so I was like, so you, it's not a money thing, it's you'd want more for your money, like more people. So, um, so I, I felt like, yeah, maybe it's time for me to move on. When I realized that certain artists were having like strange meetings and getting their videos on, but bypassing me when I was in charge of videos, and was like, what's going on here? I got too big for my boots, that's my truth. I got too emotionally close to the channel and forgot that he was the boss. It's his, it's not mine. But I thought it was mine for so long. I was wearing the branding, T-shirts everywhere I was going. People were paying for my drinks and my food. Mr. Channel, you know you're not. You work there. There was rumours that the channel was in trouble financially. And then... That's, at least if you're running a business, if you have people like that underneath you, you need to hold on to those people because that's the type of uh, employees that help make a ship stay on course. Because when you start letting employees feel like that uh, gentleman just said how he was feeling, that's when you begin to lose some of the best pieces of the, we'll say, corporation, business, or circle that you have put together. When people don't feel valued and also feel like their positions are being stepped on, oh, you've lost the plot, my G. Because God damn it. I don't want, in any business I'm running, I don't want, if you're in there working for me, I don't want nobody to be like, oh yeah, like, I thought this was, like, my thing. Like, it may not be your thing in that way, but, like, whatever your position is, like, I'm not going to step on it just because I own it. Like, that's just, that's shitty upper management. That's not good. And it was like, you know, we're going to be doing some redundancies, basically. And so I got offered a redundancy, and I took it. And that, that was how I ended up leaving the channel, though. Like, my heart left the channel a long time before then. Oh, human. I did some, I can say it all now. I, did, I, just, I, I wiped the computer. I said, you're not taking my hard work. I, I emailed myself, like, all my contacts, and I wiped the computer, and I said, there you go. I was 22, 23. I check it from time to time. I was, I was obviously very concerned about it. I was still a major shareholder in the channel, um, and I, I still kept in, in touch with Darren a lot, and we, we've still meet up and, and discuss it. But uh, it wasn't on my TV most of the time, and I had a lot of other projects on. Ironically, I did get back in for probably the last six months of Channel AKA's existence, but that was uh, as to help Darren out rather than anything else. Just kind of faded out, I guess, in a way, to the point where there was still enough of, like, AKA left to be able to, like, you know, kind of hold on to it and go out with, you know, like, you know, a, a little bit of a bang, maybe, but I think it was just, it, it just felt like time for everybody. Damn, they did another six years, though? Yo, 
I respect Bashy because Bashy ain't gave a fuck about what nobody's gonna say about him. He's gonna do exactly what the fuck he wanna do, and sometimes it just lands so perfectly. Cause this is a song like I've not even heard it like in its entirety, but this one I'm just like a lot of niggas are, especially young black men, aren't able. Not even just young black men, but like young men in general aren't able to step outside of themselves and praise those in their particular work sphere or age range. It's always um, hyper competitive. So to hear songs like this, I'm just like, shout out to this man. Shout out to him. Every few months, I'll go back on YouTube and listen to some of them tunes, man, some of them classics, you know what I mean? Because they weren't a feeling like that. There were legends, like Skepta, when there was one video when he pulls up and then the girls pull up in the little Beatle thing, blood, there's that, and then you remember that girl group that was in the Beatle? The one with the, the braids. Where is that girl today? Channel U Awards show as well, you go to that. Those are the times, it was lit, it was lit. Baby Blue. Yeah. Then obviously seeing people like SAS with like Kanye and videos and, and what they were doing with Rockefeller. Remember these times, we're all young. In the beginning days of China, you still live at home with our parents. So I used to go to their mom's house. Like every time they would come back from New York, I'll go to their mom. Because you never had social media then, you have to wait for a man to come back to tell you what it was like. So it'll be like a whole five hours. They're like, yo, I went to Dame Dash's house. I was at Dame's house. I went to Cam's house, I was staying at Joel's house, and I'm just thinking like, what is going on? This is mad, so, nah, man, that was crazy. That was crazy, man, yeah, man, SAS, super talented, Euro gang. It just wouldn't be the same at all, because we would try to, to be in more. We wouldn't be our authentic I selves. Like the, I can't and remember the record, was but it was hard, allowed though. us to just be us, for us. Ed Sheeran. Bro. Even what the streets used to do with all the prime MCs all the time. Morning, morning, this one stormy. That's the feeling, yeah, and it was rolling, rolling through Peckham in some whip. Clash Nicole. Clash your ass, Clark Nicole. Blood. Listen, we need to do a Channel U concert day. Just bring back it. That would be sick. Personally, I don't think Channel U gets the respect it deserves. But it gets the respect for me, but that's just how I see it, innit? A lot of kids that started just listening to music recently now. They're never gonna have an appreciation for Channel U. It probably don't even sound like it makes sense. Like what you you lot used to watch the TV every day to wait to see if there's new songs and that. That's some old caveman thing, like. If the younger generation are not watching documentaries like this, they don't know about it to give it the respect. We all know what they've contributed. Yeah, but whether it's recognised the way it should be is another thing. But I, I praise Channel U like it was like the best thing that ever happened to us. Channel U was a life changing moment for me, and like I've said in the beginning, like, I don't know if I'll be here in this way if it wasn't for Channel U. But if that's not Gangster didn't do what it did, then open certain doors to me and bring me to certain spaces and places, then my journey would have been completely different, man. So there might not even be a sincere if it wasn't for Channel U in this way, which is mad for me to even say that, because I reckon that everyone's destined and designed to be what they're going to be. But this version of me wouldn't exist. The people that used it and it worked, I feel it would always be close to their hearts, but we have sometimes a problem over here to remember legacy and remember people and remember foundation because things move so quick and people rewrite history. I think it does. I think it definitely gets the credit it deserves. Just like Pirate Radio, it gets the credit it deserves because it was a timeline. Everything played a significant role within the timeline. We're talking about a channel which we launched 20 years ago now. People's memories do fade a bit. I think I'm, I'm really happy that, that this project is a memory to what we, we achieved there. But there's, there's quite a lot of people I know who came up through, through the channel and who built businesses on the channel, and that, that's hugely satisfying to see. It started off here, you know, in 2003. Now, you've got all these phenomenal creative artists that they grew up under the Channel U canopy. They grew up under the Channel U spectrum, and we're happy for them. We salute them, we get them round of applause for what it is they're doing. Now the whole globe understands the level of what UK is doing. Yeah. We should be celebrating it. We should be bigging Channel U up. I think Channel U done amazing things for, you know, underground culture. I think if it wasn't there at the time, I don't know what would have really happened. I don't know how long it would have took the UK scene to flourish to the level that it flourished at. I think Channel U also showed all of those people that were trying to control the game, they can't control it no more. And they had to now come and talk to a man at a different level and a different balance and a different stance with a different checkbook and a different everything, different suit, you need a different tie. 
might all need a different toothpaste. So many people learnt their, their trade and learnt their skill from Channel U. So this is a point where people are going to realise how significant Channel U was. And wow, I don't know where a lot of us would be if Channel U didn't pop up. It was a massive platform, a massive stepping stone for us. Without Channel U, boy, then then we we wouldn't have had nothing. Like for real, big up Darren, man. Darren enjoyed watching people succeed. You could see it in him. He really wanted Grime to win. People should celebrate Darren. Big up Darren for being an innovator. Definitely 100% for Indubs. Indubs owe them a, a kiss a champion. Darren is a man. If kiss he loves a it, champion. He Shout out to that boy Devlin. stop you buying anything, and I, I was brought up to pay me way. I ain't a punch, you know what I mean? But if he loved you, he'd do anything for you. Go out on a limb for you. Just, he was a larger-than-life character, man. Always laughing or joking about. And, uh, just a Yo, my man has to be dead. I've not seen my nigga once, and we're so deep into the documentary that I'm just like, yo, is my, my nigga, are we saving him for, like, the very end of, like, I'm Darren? Like, I don't think that's happening. So I think my man's passed away, especially the way they're talking about him. They're using past tense as well, and not just because in memory of, like, what they're speaking on. They're using past tense uh, words that I'm just like, my God, I got to be gone. It's a great man. I can say it's the best time of my life. In terms of in, in the business, he taught me the good, the bad, and the ugly of the music industry. He was happy to take you as you were. And I think that, you know, that is an important part of his legacy because it allowed us to all grow into the artists that we are today. I didn't know he's had a series of meetings. And at the time, gigs turned up for a meeting as well. So I'm kind of guessing, I mean, bruh. Long story short, bro, we end up at two different strip clubs, my guy. Like, um, I didn't talk peas with the guy. I turned up the next day on set, no pay rise. Just the lap dance that he paid for me. The G Shock, right, crazy it. dumb collection. The G Shock, crazy Man dumb. Shot. Big tiny tech has got collection. This is, bro, the bullet went through here. Boom. You get me? The mad thing. Mash down, think they go going road. I keep it road, cuz. Real road. Real road. We're trying to leave the road. He's taking over the road. I'm taking over the road, cuz. You get what I'm saying? It's a real road. But listen, yeah, the music. So, future plans. You lot said Wiley. You lot got videos coming oh, out. Any tricky. other singles? Yeah, we got a few that, videos coming out. I make sure Channel U get behind that, you know? Shout out to Channel U. Channel AK, cuz. Channel, okay. Channel U got robbed for Channel. Channel AK yeah. robbed Channel U, <laughs> innit? Channel AK. <laughs> When we're talking about the music industry and the grassroots nature of grime and UK rap, I don't think that Darren gets enough mention um, about the position that he played um, and, yeah, the, the actual nature of the role that he played in breaking down those doors and changing the way that labels and execs looked at the music industry um, at the, the grassroots level. More than anything, I just think he's just a pioneer and, and played a massive part in you know, the way things played that and, and the evolution of UK music, to be honest. He's one guy that has the way f Why my nigga look like he just got out of a scuffle? Like somebody had him in a headlock and that's why his hair is loose on top. I'm I'm so confused by this nigga, man. I'm so confused. Scorcher don't give a fuck. It don't make no sense. Things played that and, and the evolution of UK music, to be honest. He's one guy that had my back, man, when there was times where Man couldn't get on nothing, let alone TV, like radio, those bare people just blocking. Big up Darren for that, man, and thank you for all the, the support over the years, man. Trust me, well appreciated, man. It was devastating to lose Darren. It was uh, a very unique relationship for Call me. That we had someone Terrible. who was both my business partner and such a close friend. We would speak 15, 20 times a day on the phone. And it, it, it leaves a massive, massive hole in your life. I got a phone call from his wife. And um, she, oh, I feel like I couldn't get to it. Um, you know, we were really great friends. And, you know, I was gutted when I, I heard it had passed away because there was a lot of unsaid stuff between us. A lot of things that he thought, a lot of things that I thought. And ultimately, we could have just brushed them away years before and just remained really great friends. Um, but I think with the pressure which was mounting with the channel and the pressure I had with my studio, you know, we kind of just drifted apart and I say certain things were said. And sadly, I can't ever kind of, you know, speak to him again about it. You know, I was, I was really happy to see people like Lethal B and Devlin and Getz, everyone kind of 
you know, they, they, they pay tribute and I think it's important that people know what he did for the culture and for where we are now. Um, but yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I was gutted. I think it was the day after, one or two days after his funeral, I heard about it and man, I was really pissed. I was really, really upset because I hadn't seen him again since we went our separate ways. For a long time, Darren had been away from, like, you know, like his wife and, like, the family and everything. And I think Channel U took him away a lot of that time. You know, like, he was so invested in it and he loved it. And, you know, like, and she just got him back to an extent. And I remember going on my Skype for months, like, you know, like, he'd be there, like, you know, on the side of my Skype. And I'll always remember he'd sent me a message and I hadn't replied. Like, I missed that last conversation with him. And, um, yeah, I think, like, after that, I, um, I phoned, like, I think I phoned Colin. We started doing different things, so we didn't see each other as much as we did, but we were always in contact and we were always meeting up when we could. And we were always going for, like, drinks and food and talking about life and the stuff that we did together and the mistakes we made and the ramifications and yeah we, we were friends you know what i mean so yeah we, we was in contact um yeah quite a bit actually i spoke to him the day before he passed away and we, we were talking about going to a football match the week after he was starting a new business all the time you know, like he had a catering business where he was um, supplying food to festivals. And it was like only Darren would think of something so simple but so effective. Darren had a heart attack a little while before he passed. And obviously we was all gutted and that and thought he was on the mend. And sadly enough, yeah, he, he went and I think the manager, Colin, rang me. Cried my eyes out when I heard he passed. I was very tight with him. We, we all was my people. Uh, yeah, very sad, sad times, man. Still missing there. He was always giving me support, you know, and telling me about the new artist I was working with. So yeah, we was we we would be we was always always speaking it until the sad day. My old man always said to me, "You can only make memories in life." He had a World Cup party once in his right out in Essex in his land, and I think we stole Digital Dan's weed. Did it? He was nearly having a meltdown. Uh, his dog was like a lion. I think it was called a Leopold. Someone, I woke up with that lick in my face the next morning, I think, on the grass. Just mental times, yeah, man. Good to look back on. I think sometimes, you know, like, legacy is too much, like, it's too egotistical, yeah. But for real, he's actually left a legacy. Like, he actually left a lasting impact on a scene. Boy, he's a G for that. Rest in peace to the OG. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I swear it was like around the times when things were going well, when we had to pack guns and then Ash went jail when then I... It was definitely good times, like learnt a lot, met a lot of people. It was a massive I guess, educational period. Darren respected me five times more when I left Channel U, because I'd gone into the big wide world <laughs> and, oh, and I was working for all these major labels and shooting like big budget videos. So I think he finally thought, oh, maybe you did need to spread your wings. You know, I look at someone like um, Sincere who manages um, Fredo and I put Sincere's first video on the channel, That's Not Gangster, when he was a rapper. Um, and then, I managed him as an artist later on. And then when he started managing as an artist, he came to me. So I've had three different interactions with this guy that started with me putting his video on his channel. Things like that are the, are the legacy of Channel U for me. I do occasionally, because I'm human, say to myself, I wish I was more smart back then. I would have opened up an agency and just developed artists and had that till now. Since Darren in 2009, <clears throat> I've remained in the business of insolvency. I published my book <laughs> last year. Yo, my nigga love his job. There's not a lot of people that work in his field that 
can give a passion about a job that he has because he's like, yo, since then, I've been doing it up. Um, Self-made by me, PJ Murray. It's my autobiography uh, detailing um, my 50 years on this planet, all the ups and downs and the roller coasters that goes with it. Now, today, I've got my own TV production company and I often use my experiences from, you know, Channel U to produce shows today. I'm working with secondary school kids, teaching, head of year. Don't ask me how that happened. I've gone from putting Chung family on TV to giving A stars to people. So I, I run an um, independent management company, um, a publishing company, um, a record label um, called Since 93. Ricky was smarter back then. Ricky was laying foundation, and he did try and tell me. But I was on a hype. I was getting free trainers from Adidas every week. I was getting <laughs> money clothing like it was nothing. Big up Shabs as well, by the way. Shabs is, um, he was always around and trying to look out for people. Today I'm still, um, I, I, I play an A&R role. Um, I lend my producer skills, um, management. Um, yeah, and I always, it's all because of the strength of our black music scene that, that, that is today, the strength of, of Channel U as well. I took a leap of faith into the pop world. I went to Sony, I went into Psycho Records, and the commissioner, who I'd only met for the first time, said, just so you know, your reel and your work experience doesn't justify you doing this video for Simon Cowell, just so you're aware. Well, that made me, like, dig deep, because I was thinking, hang on, you have no idea what I've been through to do this, so <laughs> this is a walk in the park. And, and so I, I smashed it, is what I did. <laughs> I really had to ask myself, like, what it was that I'd loved so much about it. Like, why had I stayed, like, in this bloody, crazy, like, you know, raw, like, energetic, like, you know, nuts environment, like, getting shit off everybody all the time. And, and you know, like, but I mean, like, it was, it was amazing. And I realised that it was watching that growth and being a part of that was what I absolutely loved. I started 10 Letter, like, go with it. I know these people, I know these people. I know that I want to connect all these artists and, like, put them in front of everyone. Let me go and do it. And, and that is literally how it came about. Um, I'm, I'm keeping busy now. I've still got two television channels, which Darren and I started, uh, sitting on Freeview. I'm also involved with a co-founder of a, a green technology business, which cleans up the waste from copper mines. So it's not something quite different. Yeah. That's everything you need, really? Okay. So that's me, myself and I, Luke Biggins, director. You're watching Big. Check me out on www.urban-visual.co.uk. Alternatively, if you want a video made or you want to get in contact with myself, check out www.manmosquito.co.uk. Big shout out to everybody I know out there. And if you, you know, want to be a director, keep at it. And uh, good luck. Peace. Ah, oh, damn, we just lost our boy. Damn, rest in peace to the boy. Once upon a grind in the hood, screwing the sign flies out, stare at the white skies and speak to the skyline, consume more than Leah, I'll be selling them white lines, repping the white powder just Bunch of pictures and shit. I'm gonna the size that through the ink because it ain't going to fuck. I'm from I'm Dan Brown. See it there? My situation. Bunch of pictures and that. No, because ain't much more, fam. Ain't much more than like okay, okay. a vicious circle of pop. We for sure probably lost a bunch of other people that did not get highlighted in this video or uh, this documentary. And rest in peace to all them folks, too, that are not getting, uh, we'll say, their individual highlights. Because I know there's a lot of people that they probably did not get to cover. Especially, like, I know the shit blew up with Mike GLC, but I really would have liked to have heard his input on this era of time as well. <clears throat> Bro, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was a nighttime channel, you man. When it, when it got hard. Yo, that's when, what's it called? That's like a BT Uncut. You remember that? Ooh.
whole BET uncut, yo, when that tip drill video came out or that white girls video, oh my god, it was a lit time in this. Oh, I don't know if y'all know about BET uncut, but if you do, Jesus. I remember watching Nelly swipe cars through bum cheeks. Yeah, that was amazing. Tip that drill. Was lit. I have blood. If you remember tip drill, trust me. <laughs> Hey, that was the maddest thing back then. <laughs> oh, gosh. Expect you was Darren's idea, obviously. <laughs> Who sits in a meeting and says, mate, what we're going to do, we're going to have a music video channel, and then after that, from 11 o'clock, we're going to have some, some, you know what I mean, mild porn, yeah, for the kids to watch. Yeah. Who does that, bro, and gets away with it? <laughs> <laughs> a couple of times, uh, a couple of... Uh, there were a couple of opportunities. No, let me start again. I don't use that word. <laughs> <laughs> Channel X rated. But this is another thing. I got dragged into shooting them videos too. I shot <laughs> at least four X rated videos. X, X, you, what's that? Oh, shit. There was an episode of the Ill Out show that they did at like um, Babe Station and all that kind of stuff. So Daffy had one as well. So he was like, right, we're going to do a video for it. It was like the perfect excuse for him. So they ended up like going off and doing this like, you know, triple X like video for that. The artist is called. This is the genesis of Skeptors all around the house. That music video is mad as fuck. Marche, and um, he was like a real life pimp. You know, um, in in a very in a in a accepting and and and, and uh, good way, if that makes any sense. Now scrap that. Doesn't make sense. Can't say it's good. <laughs> Fam, I'm not gonna lie. I just started seeing they were showing like after after dark videos. Like, I was like, right, I need one of them then. So I remember I was doing my album and I was just like, I need to make a tune that I can do a video for and get some. You know what I'm saying? Areolas out and you know what I'm saying. And oh, how would they go again? They want to be the best. Man, shout out to that nigga, Lethal, because apparently we like to have the same audio interface. He got the black version, but he got the the big John, though. I only got the regular John, and it's gray, but that universal audio, though, if you don't know about the uni universal audio Apollo interface, do your Googles and get in the studio, but that shit like $1,200, so it ain't cheap. It ain't cheap. Suck on the brass, 34 double D chairs. Yeah, aye, aye, that day was hilarious. So my shave and moan, rumor had it, was a real life gallus. And uh, he um, had lots of uh, relationships and uh, female associates. And um, a lot of the people that con contributors, the talent, that, that are the models in this video were personal friends. And um, yeah, th that's why it looked quite organic. All the man them I was rolling with at the time, yeah? I didn't want to tell them we was doing the video because I thought if I tell them we're doing the X-rated video, you're going to tell Bear Man and Bear Man's going to want to pull up. So I've gone, yo, man them, I'm doing some, some filming. I think I said Channel 4 or something like that. I was like, everyone, be at my yard this time, 10 a.m., like, we're doing something. They're like, all right, all right, cool. So they make sure you're looking clean because we're all getting filmed, innit? So the man like, all right, cool. So this time I'm in East London, Boundary. The man then pulled up now, like, cool, 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 cool. So when they got there now, I said, yeah, 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 I'm not going to lie, I was chatting shit. He said, what, what, what? So I'm shooting the video. He said, why are you chatting shit about that? I said, boy, it's an X-rated video, isn't it? <laughs> and they were like, nah. A couple of men have got girlfriends and that, innit? So they're like, oh, blood, my girl's going to fucking kill me. But fuck it, it's work, innit? I don't think I spend a lot of time on XX with you, not really, no. Nah. Oh, the late <laughs> yeah, the late night one was mad still. But my mum watched all my videos, so I couldn't get to do any of them ones. You know what I mean? <laughs> Mumsy was manager at that point. I remember Babe Station, because you could call out the girls on Babe Station that as well, but nah, nah. I heard. You know what I mean? <laughs> I heard, didn't it? We just got bare porn stars. I don't know how we found them, just bare porn stars, like probably like 10 <laughs> porn stars. <laughs> Yo, whoever did these cartoons is just out of line, niggas. <laughs> and they were just, yeah, just playing around and like in the water and just roll, rolling around the studio. And then someone accidentally played them all during daytime TV, which we were like, oh my God, fines left, right and centre. But, um, but you know, fairly, kids are waking up at seven o'clock in the morning, switching the channel on and God knows what's in their face. <laughs> You caught me off guard. No, you caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs>
And that's what gas. All right. Uh, Home Invasion Story Channel U. This was a good one. This is a good one. Very informative. I got to learn a whole lot uh, from this one. It's nice to kind of see, like, the progression and, like, the impact of it all because without Channel U, I for sure wouldn't be here today, like, with, a, like, the Grime Files or any of the UK Rap Files or any of that stuff like that. So it's very nice to see kind of, like, the bridge thing that kind of also was the springboard to giving a lot of these people either bigger careers or just starting their careers or just being, like, a seminal thing in the culture of Grime or UK, like, urban music. And, and watching this also, like, it really, like, sticks out in my mind how young the U.K. urban music scene is compared to America. Because it's, it's, like, probably, like, maybe, like, a good 30-year gap. Because Channel U is, like, the, the genesis of, like, we'll say the U.K., like, not the complete genesis, but, like, really where U.K. urban music takes off. And that's only 20 years ago. And hip-hop is almost 60 in America. So, like, we've got, like, a large time difference despite me thinking that we should have been having a crossover of musics and cultures since curtis blow in them's era but apparently just it didn't work like that and that's also why like grime was able to come to become something it was or like why you guys have garage jungle and all these other things that we just particularly don't have even though like garage ducks come from america it never <clears throat> like had a real foothold like it does in the uk because garage i don't even like even techno like techno is not even something that like is nationwide in the united states it's it's very it's very strange that a lot of the electronic sounds just never took off in america but they have like a chokehold in the uk but uh yeah that's enough of my rambling shout out to rashid all the folks at link up tv everybody that was put in the video and all that uh thank you guys very much for your time if you did watch all this with me i truly do appreciate it this is a long one i don't know who's watching this but if you do thank you if you made it to the end, you're a, you're a goddamn trooper. Shout out to you. Mad respect. But, uh, yeah, I got some more stuff I got to go film. Thank you guys very much for your time. Please hit that like, subscribe. Patreon's in the description. And I'll see you on the next one. I'm out of here. Peace.